Good evening, and welcome to Sinister Inclinations, the horror show. Or good day, depending on or the time of day that they have watched this. Could be evening. Spot. <laughs> um, first of all, what I want to say this evening is thank you to our viewers, Terry's wife and, and my aunt, yes. um, for your continued support. And, and does Rosie actually watch all the way through? Abs uh, yes, actually, she does, and she makes comment uh, uh, about it. And, and uh, she actually was going to go send some mail in uh, this time, but she only sent me. Okay, so. well, we're hoping that as time goes on, we'll get more than two viewers. Um, Fingers crossed. Pretty, yes, fingers, toes crossed, and everything. But as you know, Jim, um, uh, 666 is the number of the beast, as we all know. But it's also the sixth show Ooh. of Sinister Inclinations. The sixth show. Last one was the show with five See, fingers. If Dave makes six, <laughs> like this, <laughs> then that would be 666. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, I was, really, I was I thought about that line all day. I said I'm going to use that when they had to introduce the numerical uh, number. First season, sixth show. There we go. Okay. Okay. To my right, as usual, is Terry Sherwood. Hi. And to my far right is uh, well, gee, what can I say you about Mr. Trainer? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I forgot your name. <laughs> Um, a special effects uh, man for many years. If you've seen things like Blade Two, uh, Tucker and Dale versus Evil, Herschel Gordon Lewis's Blood Mania, Fargo, Hell on Wheels, uh, Winona Earp, you you've seen his work. Um, this is Dave Trainer. Uh, he's welcome to the show. Uh, yeah, he's uh, a connoisseur of earlier culture, a, a wicked martini maker. And it's a pleasure to have you here, Dave. Thank Thanks, you. Guys. Thanks, guys. Yeah, I haven't seen you in, in well, what, since? A couple days. A couple days. Yeah, yeah. well, <laughs> have you been? Good, good. Good, yeah. good, yeah. So we'll keep this informal. We'll get yeah. into the special effects here a bit. The first question I wanted to ask you would be, I decided on the way here while I was rocking out to a little bit of David's soul <laughs> that uh, I would ask As you the you same. mostly do. Mostly, yeah. mostly. Yeah, and it, well, and Herb wasn't available. No, no, oh. not on my playlist. Oh, okay. Hasselhoff was. It? Yeah, and some Partridge family. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Tony DeFranco. Yeah, Heart Beats a Love Beat. Beat. Love yeah, you betcha. Okay. But I thought I'd ask you this uh, as an opening question, the same question I would ask the Dalai Lama if I was yeah. to uh, meet the Dalai Lama. He's on next week. I think so. Well, we're hoping. <laughs> yeah, we're, our, our people are talking. Okay. Yeah, because he's a major horror fan. He is? Yeah, I he's he, he's at a Gorno. Yes, I yeah, <laughs> heavy Gorno. Um, <laughs> that is my belief there. I can't get sued. Um, so if I was to actually traverse the waters, yeah. have an arduous journey, yeah. get to a place that kind of looks like that oriental Kowloon place or whatever that Danny Rand has to protect, an iron fist. And I ascended the stairs and was given an audience with the Lama himself. Yeah. The first question I would ask, well, the only question I'd have to ask the venerable Lama would be, how big's your dong? Sick. <laughs> gosh, gosh. <laughs> okay, no more. <laughs> I have to do that to you, Dave. Dawn, we go back a long way. Make me feel at home. Dong, <laughs> Dong is outside warming the car up. <laughs> Dong, come here. <laughs> Eat this talk. <laughs> okay. Does so, he have a bell that goes ting tong? Oh, okay. I thought this was a children's show. Yes. Well, well, it, it is. Can be. It, it is. Can be. <laughs> oh, it can. It can be. <laughs> we could just do it with puppets. Well, same thing. Children and growing up bodies. Yes. Not well, essential. Maybe not. <laughs> so, anyway. if you if you've watched past episodes, you know that we've been talking about uh, holiday films, werewolf films, and vampire films. So, since our last episode, I tried to catch up on some of the holiday stuff. And I know you tried. Yes, 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 I did. I, I did manage to do quite a bit. Uh, there's quite a bit out there. And uh, if you sift through the material and everything, uh, you'll find uh, there's still a lot of material out there. And you could never catch up. No. Um, I thought Easter would be easy. I really did. No, it's not. It's... it's uh, Every, anything could be a subject for a horror picture. Um, it's, it's probably part of marketing. 
too. Uh, when election day, for instance, I'm sure, I'm sure there's one out there for that. Well, I, I don't think you could possibly make it any more horrifying <laughs> in real life. But um, so yeah, over the over the Easter weekend, I watched uh, Bunny, the killer thing, and I watched. Um, Was it part one or two? It was part one. Oh, okay. Bunny? There's no. part two? Bunny. I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Bunny the Killer thing was, it wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. Um, really? Well, I, no, I, I, I yeah. expected a little worse. You know, we don't want to come on here and slag Bash people, films. For, slag yeah. people for try, you know, getting something out there and getting something seen. But uh, it was an interesting, what, hour, 15 minutes of, uh, of one's life. Uh, watching this, um, I'll have to say one of the best parts of it though was the soundtrack. Yes, well, uh, sort of eighty little. It's a Finnish film yeah. from Finland, so yeah, and Finland has some of the best metal. It's a death there. metal. It was yeah. a death metal yeah. thing. Um, um, I personally thought it was a frat boy film. But, well, uh, if that's the kind of stuff that. That that goes that people like to watch and swell whatever it is they're swelling and watch that's cool. Yeah, well, I, I don't disagree with you. I mean, well, it's the whole movie is basically dick jokes, party jokes. Yeah, there that's, was some there was some serious overtones though. The basic uh, well, the, the basic premise is a writer goes to Finland to get away, to a retreat and write a book. These guys who were never identified to my satisfaction. Oh, wearing yes. ski masks and stuff, right. grab him, blow his wife, well, I, I won't do any spoilers, but they take him and they inject him with this fluid that turns him into a rabbit. Uh, or, well, actually, actually, uh, it turns him into a guy in a really, really shitty bunny costume. Really hey, bad. I worked on that film. Did you? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Rascally rabbit deal. <laughs> but he's got like a dick, a rubber dick about this long attached to the front of the bunny suit. Like all rabbits have. Like all rabbits, yeah, of course. Right. Yeah. And he runs around for most of the, the film saying, pussy, pussy, and doing a helicopter with the dick. Was um, last Saturday, wasn't it? Jay? No, uh, no, no. <laughs> that wasn't me. That was uh, another indistinguishable Asian <laughs> fellow. Um <laughs> but <laughs> I, I'm not even going to say anything for that one. <laughs> like, what I will say is I laughed a few times. Yeah. There was two times I couldn't help myself. I, I had to laugh. Yeah. Um, and a couple of the scenes, especially at the end when the guy's running away and he gets his head blown off, it was a really good effect. I, in fact, well, I want to. the end now, or? Well, yeah, I think so. I think so. But but there's a chance there could be other bunnies. Oh, okay. Because they multiply yes. like crazy. No, that was the whole idea, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. The underlying theme of the Rabbit. whole thing. You wanted to mate like a rabbit. Um, do you have anything further to add to that? Or? Um, I really don't know what to make of that picture. I don't know if, if, if Dave's had a chance to no, see it or, 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 or something. It's something but to you save, will yeah. now. Save yeah. for a winter night. Okay. Uh, now, did you learn any yeah. swear words watching the subtitles or anything? Was uh, there subtitles? Or yes, it was subtitles. Yeah. So did you, was, was the word dick in, in Finland? Um, moi aktiverik. Is that? Moi aktiverik. Is that really? Yes, yeah. it is. Yeah. There's, it's moi aktiverik. It means... Uh, nice ass. Well, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, but my other complaint. Yes. As often in horror movies, the one girl that you want to see naked doesn't get naked. But she the lives rescue. probably through the whole thing. She? No, no, oh, she no. She gets, she gets she uh, gets bunny boned. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really at a loss for words on this one. Uh, people, the viewers out there will have to see it themselves and make the. Yeah. Uh, it's it's. it's make, it's not a waste of, of time. It's just, it's if you go in with lower expectations, I think you're okay. It's yeah, like, you know, it's kind of like Russ Mayer meets Hanna Barbera, a little bit. No, in with cock. Yeah, yeah, it, and uh, I don't. I really didn't know what to to make of it because I watch. I watch. You know the. You know when he comes out yelling all the time and everything, and I'm going. Is that what he's saying? Is that what I think he's saying? Mm -hmm. You know, and he's saying it all the time, and I'm going, "Is you going to say something else?" <laughs> you know, and 
I'm going, okay, so I guess that's the, that's the point of the picture. Um, some good chase moments, uh, like you said, some good effects moments. Uh, some, there was some mildly, I shouldn't say mildly, there were some serious moments in, in the picture, like the one with the kid in the closet, part with the kid in the closet, and oh, he's watching, yeah. you know, and the young girl, the blonde girl has passed out from too much drink, and it was kind. Of, there was there was a connotation of uh, of date rape. I'll say it. Uh, but lesbian I'll date say rape. It. Yeah, there was and voyeurism in it. Yeah, and he's standing in the closet getting aroused. Yeah, there was this kind of a connotation to it. So, you know, in today's day and age, it's, it's uh, a tender subject yeah. as, as it should be and everything. And I thought that was it, you started to get a little dark in there. But uh, um, Easter wise. I watched Holidays, that basically covers um, various holidays, short films. Um, I was actually surprised. I was actually surprised. Kevin Smith actually directs one of the episodes. Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah. I'd never seen the show, but I knew he directed one of them. Yeah, yeah. and it, uh, the Easter one was a bit of a, eh, it's all right. The Easter one, you know? No, no, I have no idea who the director was or who wrote it. Um, but it concerned druids and that kind right, of thing, right. and rebirth, and it was, you know, yeah, it was all right. Which brings us to <clears throat> the other one. <laughs> brings us to the other one? Oh, we were talking Easter, Easter Bunny Massacre? Is this the one? Uh, Easter Bunny Bloodbath. Easter, Mud oh. Oh. Easter Bunny Massacre is probably the sequel. No, I should no. have given it away. No, I uh, found Easter Bunny, Bunny Bloodbath, and I said, Terry, for the show watch Easter Bunny Bloodbath. So one of the first things he says to me this evening when we arrived on set was, thank you so much. Um, regrettably, it's a Canadian film. It's, uh, and again, we don't, we're not here to bash filmmakers, but this one was, it was shot in, uh, I believe, Vancouver and Chilliwack. Yeah. And it's on video. The new technology at the time. I don't. I don't. Know oh yeah. Oh, they yeah. made a they made a big thing about that, didn't yeah. they? Yeah. About yes, made to look like video. In other words, yeah. all we have is an old video camera. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but, but really, it wasn't. The production values weren't bad. Well, uh, other than the fact there's the main character who's in the prologue, he's a, a, a white boy, and then they go to him later on. They say ten, fifteen years down the road. They oh say yes. He's. he's no longer white. He's, uh, <laughs> he's, played by another he's an East Indian with uh, East Indian. with red hair for yes. some reason. Yes. Yeah. Was it art? Or something? Well, they were just quibbling, I think. <laughs> yeah. Um, it, was, uh, it was, you know, it was not like, you know, a little mosque on the prairie or anything yeah, yeah. like this, but it was. Uh, was it a plot twist or anything? No. Just no, you, you see the end coming oh. right three minutes into the film. Right when it says the end. What it does do is it does contain, Dave, yeah. the least enthusiastic kill I've ever seen. Yeah. And basically what it comes down to is the guy in the bunny suit chopping away at somebody. And somebody on behind the camera has obviously like a spray ketchup bottle. Yeah. And he's spraying Jeez. it. Because you can see it comes out like a like Same. whiz. <laughs> like whiz. You're gonna have to you, let us let us know about whiz. <laughs> Not the audience. Inquiring knows. viewers want to know. It looks like whiz. somebody's peeing ketchup on him. But yeah, it's just it, and, and the bunny is moving this fast. Yeah, it's just a horrible film. Yeah. Um, it was James Franco was in that one? I think so. Yeah. It was one of his <laughs> early, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> one of his early roles. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> like the ketchup bottle. <laughs> Um, Sorry, James, not meaning to, we don't disparage anybody. Yeah. And shortly, I, I guess, well, before that was April Fool's Day. Yes. And I watched April Fool's Day, the original yes. 80s film. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Uh, that was good. Good twist to it. Yeah. You know, like well, yeah, but if you would, you, you had to know from the very beginning, by the title of the film, what was going to happen yeah. at the end. Well... You know, I, I, I kind of gave it the benefit of the doubt on it because I, I just said, I'm just going to let this play over me and not overthink this. You mm -hmm. know? And uh, I, you kind of get the idea, you know, when they go on all these little pranks, like the, it still makes you laugh. Mm -hmm. You turn on the faucet and spray somebody's face, you know, and 
it, it's still it's still a it's still a laugh maker or the doorknob comes off on the hand you know this sort of thing you know I, I, there were some well placed things in it but you kind of go oh but you accept it in that in the context of that film uh, caught blonde too <laughs> wasn't the same that was the same girl from Valley Girl wasn't it no, yeah. no, she was, um, this girl I didn't, she only thing. acted in the one role, oh, did she? Okay. and she later on went to become, She. I think she became an exec with Showcase. Oh, okay. A big exec. Let's see. Um, yeah, gorgeous I woman. Right. I, th I thought the main lead was, I thought she was in Valley Girl. Oh, well, there was, well, here, let me, let me just check you got this. The, what you got in front of you? Is that? Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see here. I could be wrong, but I thought it was the same girl. You'll be playing the Jeopardy theme music. Now. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jim is going to check about but there, but a there, life with a viewer. There are a lot of April Fool's films. Yeah. Um, yes. But you're talking about the main one that came out. Okay. Yeah, and there was yeah. a remake in 2008. Yeah. Um, that was it. Was 80s, 80s. The one you're thinking. Mm -hmm. of. Right. I honestly thought the with that film. I honestly thought the. The accident, you know, judging from the production values that I saw, say, in the first 15 minutes, but when yeah. they're on the ferry, and yeah. uh, the the two guys play that, yeah. well, I'm not going to give it away, yeah. but yeah, I thought, okay, this is part of the film, yeah. and it's not part of what's going to happen later on. Yeah, yeah. You know, I thought, yeah, this fits, you know, so... Uh, the style of, of, of picture, basically, and you've seen the film. Oh, I've I, I seen it when it came out. Yeah. So it's going quite a ways back. Yeah. Saying. That was 86 or something? Or yeah, something I think so. Like it was one of all the horror films. Well, after. Because when did Friday the 13th come out? 80, didn't it? Yeah. And that, yeah, it was yeah. still, there were still yeah. new films coming out after that. And yeah, so you get uh, you, you get a lot of the imitations, but it's still, yeah. you were speaking of plot before and everything and story, and still basically, it always seems to be group of people go to a remote area for yeah. fun. Yeah. You know, and uh, uh, the one we talked about previously, too, everybody traveling someplace yeah. for yeah. fun, uh, which seems to be a, seems to be a, a, a staple of the genre. Yeah. Uh, why don't they just stay where they are? Mm -hmm. you know, but then there'd be no film. Why does, why does the killer take a cab and come to the kids are? Yes. So, mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. we'll discuss that with Leprechaun. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, in the hood. Is that the same girl? You're talking about Deborah Foreman. Foreman, Who, yes. in her own way, is a, a bit of a scream queen. Yeah, I thought, yeah, it was Deborah yeah. Foreman. No, she didn't do Valley Girl. Uh, let me see. She has done 25 films. Yeah. And she was on MacGyver. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Lobster Man from Mars. Yeah. Really? Waxwork. Not the German one, right? Real Genius. Oh, real, oh maybe that's Hot one, Pursuit. Yeah. Grizzly 2. Oh, gee. Grizzly 2, two. Yeah. The Concert. <laughs> Grizzly 2, The Concert. Well, she was in Valley Girl. Yeah, that's what I thought she was in Valley Girl. And the girl I was referring to that was really hot, yeah. um, her name is Deborah Goodrich. Okay, yeah. And... Uh, yeah, she uh, she spent a lot of time as an exec as a story editor at Miramax. Oh, okay. For Weinstein. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, um, I, I thought it was adequate, you know, yeah. but it wasn't as. I I think he began to see. At that point, where the gore was starting to become less, at, in about eighty nine. Yeah. Um, you think it certainly it? wasn't like you know the early you know like it's Friday the Thirteenth. Yeah. yeah, it was yeah. it was you know, yeah. not so overt and, and right there in your yeah. face. Um, which brings me to another point. Yeah. I've been watching Netflix films. Did yeah. you see Veronica? No, is that that Spanish one? Yeah, yeah, I that's the, the one. That I, I didn't want to go through the subtitles, so I kind of turned it off. For a bit. Well, that's the one they say only one in one. Scariest, one, scariest film yeah, ever. one in one hundred yeah. people can actually make yeah. it all the way yeah. through. Yeah. What a fucking brilliant marketing campaign! Yeah. Because it's not scary. <laughs> it is your typical yeah. play with the Ouija board, get yeah. possessed film. Yeah. Nothing special about oh, it. Oh, don't give the plot away. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, there are people out there would want to watch it. Well, I mean, well it's a simple possession yeah. story. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> um, so it's no good then. If it happens no. again, okay. it's a no. possession. Uh, so. Tragedy Girls. I've seen, yeah, I've never seen it. Though. Yeah, about uh, two kind of psychopathic girls oh. who like to 
you know, wanted to be serial killers. Yeah. You'd love the affair. That sounds pretty good, right? Yeah. Well, I really, I told you, I like the babysitter. The babysitter was very yeah. good. I think yeah. that's in Australia. Is it shot in Australia or something? New Zealand? I'm not sure. The I'm not sure. It's the a Netflix it's original. A Net, it's a Netflix one, but it's quite comedy. Uh, mm-hmm. And uh, what else did I watch? There's been quite a few lately. Yeah, that yeah. was quite impressive. Have you seen the Final Girls yet? Like, yeah, you know, uh, Final Girls. I've never seen it, but I'm curious about it. I've got it sitting on my hard drive. I'm ready. I'm ready yeah. to watch it. Because a spoof yeah. of kids go to see a horror film. Mm-hmm. 80s one, they get sucked into the screen. They become part of the... The 80s horror film and that sort of stuff. It looks really interesting to read, but then I read that there's not much gore in it, which is kind of odd because it's an 80s horror film. It should have a lot of gore. You would think. Yeah, yeah. But I'm, I'm beginning to think now that there's going to be like a, a new golden age of horror, yeah. of, of gory horror. Yeah. Because what people are doing is with Stranger Things and everything else, they're yeah. going back to that 80s. 80s yeah, they're yeah. going back to the 80s style. Yeah. All of a sudden, people are rediscovering those films. And yeah, going, yeah. Oh, yeah, these are good. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, well, that's what Tucker and Dale is supposed to be a homage to the 80s horror film. Mm-hmm. If you watch it, it's really got a lot of stuff in there and stuff. But you see from Friday the 13th and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, just the setting and everything else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you did all the effects yeah. for Tucker and Dale. Before we get yeah. there, what made you decide to, to pursue this? Uh, I see a movie called... Alien, I think, was the first movie I seen. I, you know, I always liked all the Jack Pierce stuff from way back, and classic stuff. And a lot of the Hammer films I used to watch and all that stuff. And then uh, Alien came out, and then I think it was American Werewolf came out, Rick Baker. All of a sudden I said, there's a guy who's got a living, a job that's really cool to do. And I always like horror stuff, and I said. And I liked, yeah, I sort of started about getting into it about 80, but I, did, I dabbled a bit in makeup before then. And then that was actually when it first started where people were actually having a career in this kind of industry before that i mean jack jack pierce and all those guys they, you know, john chambers had careers and that but they weren't I don't, there was no magazines about them besides famous monsters or something like that and that's why i used to get famous monsters when you bought but then it became sort of a, almost a le- 1980s with tom savini kind of legitimized it and kind of made it a career that people mm-hmm. can pursue and that and schools weren't even started yet and there was well maybe a couple of schools yeah dick smith must have had a no he didn't do his stuff until I don't think he had a school. He had his books, though. Because mm. I had the Dick Smith books and Monsters and all that stuff. Um, what about the Westmores? Like the Westmore Brothers? Yeah, they yeah. had... Yeah. yeah, they, guess, yeah. They, they, I don't think they really had school, though. Because I don't think there was... People weren't really making... I mean, there's such an odd job that people weren't really making tons of money out of it and stuff. I mean, money's never been an important thing. But but I think in the 80s, also, there was a lot of makeup artists came out in that early 80s after Rick Baker and Rob Bottin and... and uh, all the other guys and stuff like that, and uh, uh, Frank Tuttle, I think, was it one? Frank, yeah, yeah, William, William yeah. Tuttle, William Tuttle, yeah, yeah, William yeah, yeah, Frank so, Tuttle, and he actually made his own makeup on it, yeah, and stuff like that. Yeah, there was a lot of guys. I mean, there was a lot of English, and there was also the American guys and all that stuff that that were out there and stuff. I don't know. I, it just happened to be a right time. I was, you know, I was in young twenties, and I it was, it was a perfect time to start getting really getting into. It. But I, of course, I did like the old famous, you know, I really tend to like the Hammer films and that sort of. But, but then when you said Friday the Thirteenth came out, it was a totally different thing because all of a sudden an alien came out, and it was real, kind of like really complicated gore effects. Before that, it was you could see the gore effect, but those ones were kind of getting seamless where you were starting to see, they started to look realistic. I think really realistic at that mm-hmm. point. So well, there's some good makeup in the '70s and all that was out there, but they weren't really horror films. And I think Friday the Thirteenth kind of changed that and stuff like that. And American Werewolf, of course, changed it all for me when I seen American Werewolf. I seen it eight times in the theater. Mm-hmm. You know, the, trans- was, the transformation. Yeah, and the, well, actually, the Howling I probably even liked more, but it wasn't. You know, it just kind of came at the same time. And American Werewolf was kind of had more publicity behind it than, than the Howling. Well, I preferred the comedic yeah. aspect too, though. Yeah, yeah, it was really, yeah, it was really good. And, that, and then, of course, the thing John Carpenter's thing came out, and then it was kind of like, yeah, this is this is cool stuff. You know, so. mm-hmm. So, uh, as I understand it, one of your first makeup jobs or participating in a film was the final sacrifice. Well, that one, <laughs> one of your favorites. <laughs> well, I mean, it sat on the bottom of the list of at Rotten Tomatoes for yeah. years and yeah. almost a decade. Yeah. Um, what can you What can you share about production of that? I don't know. It was uh, It was good. It was a bunch of real enthusiastic. People. A lot of them were film students that we worked over at the state, and. Um, we, what, what did we do in that? I did uh, one of the guys' makeups. Like, I wasn't really much in the makeup part. We, me and Brian Fall were building the... Well, Brian built the city that rises out of the ground. We did various props and all that stuff. But I did... I, think, I don't know... Because I put somebody put on, on IMDb that I did the makeup for 
Satoris. Is that his name? Was it? Yeah, Satoris. And I don't think I actually did. And then somebody actually wrote under there, Dave Trainer did not do that makeup. The guy who played the character did it. And I, I couldn't remember, but I might have been the straight makeup on the other characters. Well, it was just some brill cream. Yeah, well, he's something with his eyebrows, but I don't yeah, think I did that well, makeup. He, they wiped his temples. And yeah. See, I, th I think Chartis put that on that I did on IMDb, and I, I never claimed that I did it. Mm -hmm. so, so. How do you pronounce the writer's name? Chartis Gradanis? Chartis Gradanis. Yeah. yeah. I still have to contact him because I do yeah. want to do a short film, a sequel. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty, yeah, you've talked about that. Yeah. Pretty funny. yeah, I I I really want to do it. Yeah, yeah. Because no, Bruce is a friend of mine on Facebook and he's yeah. enthusiastic about it. So well, why yeah, not? Bruce, oh, yeah. Yeah. what's Bruce doing these days? Basically retired. Oh yeah, that's right. And you know, it'll kind of be like an Ash versus Evil Dead thing yeah, years yeah, 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 later, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Um and watching him try to get back into a jean jacket and yeah. do all that, you know. <laughs> it's, but it's it's kind of been done with Ash. Yeah, yeah. it's already been done. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But you know, it's it's again. You have an idea, and yeah. then it just gets you know. Yeah, yeah. Somebody yeah. else does it. But what's the following of that film? You followed? Is it a big following? It's or? huge cult. Okay. Ever since Mystery Science Theater, it up, did yeah. it. I yeah. mean, it's just it's amazing. Yeah, that's yeah. pretty neat. To know. Yeah, uh, you you were also one of the henchmen, were you? Yeah, I was got one of the guys running down the alley, and I had a mask on. I don't know what's just... well, <laughs> Was it like a black face tube, wasn't it, or something? Yeah, we had just I think the eyes cut out a bit and stuff, but we yeah. It was, I don't know, it, was, it was the cameraman was in there. It was almost half the crew was in there. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we ran down the alley, actually, not that far from here. Uh, it's probably about seven blocks from here or something. This wow. location, yeah. So there's yeah. a sign, there's a plaque up over there. That said, yeah. They shot it there. No, they didn't. <laughs> it's a blue plaque. There's, there's a plaque, yeah, it's a blue plaque. Those in the UK, it's a blue plaque. <laughs> it's actually a piece of cardboard, I think. <laughs> It, uh, some of our less fortunate have peeled off and are now sleeping on. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so what was your first um, big film or big opportunity? That, that I, th I don't know what the first big one. We worked on a film, what I had a company with Brian Paul and uh, Mark Stewart, Mark David Stewart and Paul Brown. Um, we did a film called Reflecting Skin. I think it was our first big yeah. one. Yeah, I remember that. And we did it and it was... Uh, the director was quite a genius. It was, it was the best. It was still one of the best scripts I've ever read. It was brilliant. It was like the, he was a good writer, though. Uh, Philip Philip Phil Ridley, and it was very David Lynch. If, if anybody hasn't seen it, and likes David Lynch, you got to see it. Reflecting skin. Yeah, and it's won tons of like uh, the British Film Awards, BAFTAs, or whatever I don't know what they're called, and stuff like that. And it's won for best soundtrack because the, the DOP on that was Dick Pope, who went on to do all the Narnias, and he's won a couple, couple Oscars and that. Oh, and cool. Then, of course, that was well, Viggo Mortensen's one of his first films too. He was in it, and that was so funny about that whole story about it. Uh, it's sort of an inside story that, uh, and I was told by this for some guy. I hope it's it's true. But uh, when when the film came out, they were looking in Hollywood to find the main character that the Viggo played, and it was a uh, choice between Viggo was kind of a later guy, and they had it was uh, Kiefer Sutherland, River Phoenix, and what was the other guy's name? The guy who's kind of like Jack Nicholson, what's it? Christian Slater. Christian Slater. And I remember, I don't know, one of them said they would do it for scale. I think it might have been River Phoenix, because he really liked it. And then, of course, he passed away, and then the director didn't like uh, Christian, Slater, uh, Christian Slater, because he thought he was too Jack Nicholson-like. He says, I'll just get Jack Nicholson for that role. And then Kiefer Sutherland, I think, he thought to look too old, or something, even at that time, and stuff. But then they got Vigo, because he just liked Vigo, and I think... I don't know if what Vigo just then the only thing he'd done I think was the witness of that witness at that point stuff like that. So, but, uh, so, but he he was uh, my business partner at the time Brian Fall he went and met him on set and he's the nice guy I've ever met still to this day so he's a super nice guy but he was he was just doing films to uh, pay for his photography like he was really into photography at that time at that time I think he might have been married to uh, girl from Max Zine, Zine? Girl from X, he was married to her or dating her at the same time. Really? Yeah, but he was really into art. He wanted to be a photographer. He still, I think he's still got some photography books out. And he was kind of doing acting to pay off this kind of stuff. And, and that's it, so. hmm. but, but yeah, if you haven't seen it, you should, have you seen it? Or? No. No, no you yeah, should catch it. Nah. Yeah. yeah. It just yeah. came out in DVD, actually. They did a Blu-ray and DVD because you could only get it in the VHS for many years. And it just came out. They did kind of an anniversary. I think it's 25th anniversary or something like that. And so they did a bunch of behind the scenes stuff, and that's pretty interesting. Oh, cool. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'll check out the Blu ray then. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Will you autograph it? 
<laughs> not on the disc. I'm serious. Right on the disc. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, no, yeah. I remember they used to run it to death on uh, some of the movie showcase. Channels. Showcase, yeah, showcase, was on. yeah, showcase. Right. And CBC yeah. used to play a lot of it late night and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. But even the soundtrack is really famous. Yeah. It's like the London Philharmonic Orchestra. Yeah. They got a whole orchestra of sound yeah. soundtrack, and it's beautifully shot. Like it's, you know. Speaking speaking of that, have you ever seen a film that you've made after you've completed yeah. the project, yeah. and you come on and you go? They cut something out. Uh, or yeah, there's been a couple of shows. Mm -hmm. One that I just see lately. Well, you go. Well, that's interesting. Because there's, there's been a lot of stuff cut in Fargo. The last mm -hmm. season of Fargo, they cut a bunch of stuff out. Um, I don't know. It's probably so much that I can't remember which one to specifically think of now. <laughs> so. Yeah, but it's something that you've been surprised at. That is. Like, the, yeah, yeah. Well, most of the time it's a character. Like if a yeah. character has a scar. Or something, or the funny teeth. That's what we had a problem with in Fargo. Lots of times the characters are just written out, so you never yeah. get to see them anyway. So they never even make it to the screen, anyways. Like there was one thing we did a guy with gold front teeth, and then I watched Fargo last season, and I, and I said, What happened to that guy was in there that we built a gold tooth for? I mean, they, he was just left on the cutting room floor, <laughs> so like that. So yeah. it was kind of, I mean, there's stuff like that. Not, not much of the gore. Uh, I'm also surprised how much they leave in sometimes. Like when we did, uh, we, we worked on a uh, movie called Passchendaele. It's a Canadian war picture in that. Good show. Yeah, yeah good it's show. pretty good. Yeah. Uh, and uh, there's a whole scene where, I don't know if you've seen the, the rat coming out of the mouth. Mm -hmm. sort of. And I, they had the camera so far away that I said, you're not going to see this at all. And then I thought they were just going to do a quick snippet. And they kept it on the camera for quite a while. And I was surprised because I thought they were just going to, they kept almost every frame they shot of that. Where the guy with the hand going through the mouth, they shot a lot of it. And you can barely see it at all because... I don't, I don't think they wanted an R rating on the film because it's like, cause it got a PG and you start showing all that kind of stuff and it starts getting pretty gory. Mm -hmm. But everybody, it's funny when they watch that movie, they tell me, yeah, I know what he did. He put his hand through this. How can you tell that? I I was there and they shot it and I can't, even when I watch it, I don't know, the, I can't see the guy's hand going in his head. And somehow people can just, through editing, can tell what happened. You know, and they shot a lot of footage. They'll shoot, overshoot everything and that. But then it sometimes it gets cut back because of censorship or it just starts looking fake. You can't show makeup effects too long or else they start looking kind of fake no matter how good they are like that. mm -hmm. that's uh, that's true maybe it's did they do a european cut of that film Passion i don't know i, I was i thought they were going to do i thought they were going to do a long version and put on dvd like with a lot of behind the scenes stuff and they do have behind the scenes stuff you know, but uh, mm -hmm. but i thought they were going to do an extended version because i thought they had it almost cut like a three-hour film and then they kind of cut back and that sort of stuff because there was i know there's a lot of stuff they shot a couple days they were shooting some scenes and that never made it in the film the rumor I heard was that Paul Gross wasn't uh, particularly happy because the original script yeah. was looked at yeah. and some of the producers went, well, maybe we should have a love interest. Yeah, yeah. And he, that did not make him happy. Well, because his script was written basically as his grandfather's memoirs. I mean, he kind of told me stories. But, but the problem is, I don't think maybe the producers or somebody, they didn't think that you could sell a war picture to women. And that's the problem, is you're missing half the audience and stuff like that. Really? The, I mean, the English patient didn't count? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's <laughs> right. I don't think any men would see the English patient, guys. Yeah. <laughs> so. you know, all of these going back, you know, they were expendable. All of these yeah. films were, the, you know, Donna Reed is the nurse. Yeah, the yeah, lady, yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, that's yeah, what yeah. some people think, I guess. Yeah, but I'll tell you, a lot of women went to see Saving Private Ryan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But there's, there's no love interest in there, is there? Well, mm. at the at the end, Tom Hanks and the Matt Damon wrap around at the beginning. Oh, okay. You know, no, they cut no, that. They, they cut, cut that scene. That's in the yeah. cutting yeah. <laughs> yeah. but uh, no, it's it's an interesting that you know, that yeah. they would try to wrap a love interest into into a war picture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I can see that. Um, yeah, a little sentimental. At the I, end. I, I found it, I thought found it distracting though. And Passchendaele. I thought there was enough stuff in there, but then also they also said that you know shooting war stuff, shooting go, guns going off, it gets expensive too, so you have to do all this filler. But but I I also thought the story and just him and the boy and going back to say you could have just cut the whole romance out of it and still would have been a good. It would have been probably a better picture, I feel, and stuff like that. Because yeah, it, it was a good enough story. You didn't need to have the other parts in. Yeah. Well, I think they went overboard on Pearl Harbor with the love story. Yeah, yeah. that's well, that killed it though, yeah. didn't it? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. yeah. Do you know what set the trend for that? You know, probably I'm just throwing it out. You know, from here to eternity. Yeah, yeah. You know, mm -hmm. you yeah. have the love interest, and then you 
you know, you have what's going on well with Sinatra and Pruitt well, and Borgnine and everything, yeah, yeah, a bunch of yeah. other yeah. stuff going on. But storytelling, on. though, had to be a little more, it had to be more about the story because you weren't showing graphic violence, yeah. you yeah. know, like Private oh. Ryan. And well, yeah. to, a, to a point, they actually showed, uh, this is off topic from yeah. a horror show that we're doing yeah. here, but they did show Sinatra's face when he's beaten up by Borgnine's character and everything yeah. is quite, quite quite horrific graphic. at the time well, yeah, and yeah. everything. And uh, they, of course, they underplay it because it's a major studio. It was Columbia Pictures yeah. and stuff. But Harry Cohen underplaying something? Wow. Yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> but, uh, uh, yeah, there was some violence in it. Uh, uh, the thing that was missing, and I, I haven't seen it in a lot of these today's films, they have violence, yes, for lots of different yeah. reasons, but all the violence from, like, from Here to Eternity is based on prejudice. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. You know, it's yeah. not you're not fighting something. You're pretty like you. This guy doesn't like this Italian person. So yeah, this yeah. is what was going on. Yeah, you yeah. Know? And you don't see that in today's films. That much. Yeah, yeah. But maybe that's a good thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you were telling me one day, and I think it's probably interest our viewers and okay. how this works, about the notes that you get from like effects and AMC about what you can show, what you can't show, and. You know yeah. how how that works. Um, yeah, I believe you mentioned, um, like AMC said, like you yeah. were telling me about The Walking Dead. Yeah, that you can do anything you want to a zombie. Yeah, because a dead. zombie is dead. Yeah, they're yeah. not human. But yeah, if you yeah. did the same thing you did to a zombie to a human, yeah, yeah. it wouldn't pass their yeah. their code. Well, we get it through the makeup. Like I get it through the key makeup person, uh, and they t they send they sort of send notes and stuff like that. But it changes though too, because it also changes like we did. Uh, we did a sh we did the second season of, of uh, Fargo, and um, and we did um, there was a guy who gets his head chopped. I don't know if you've s you've seen second season when he gets his head all yeah, what's his name uh, McCulkin, calling McCulkin. He gets mm -hmm. and that week they had been during that week there had been some beheadings with the Taliban and all that. So we basically built a whole body with his head cut off and everything because he's putting the meat grind. He's chopped all up, and then they couldn't show. His head, they, if you watch it, his head is just the back of him, just the back of the head. They couldn't, but we built the whole head to be shown. Like, it was a head cast, done everything was done in New York off, in New York, and it, um, they sent it out here, and then we built the whole head for it. And uh, they couldn't show it because that week they got a thing saying you can't show any beheadings on national television now because of it's too touchy because it's in the news right now. So there's actually, you can see it, you can see the back side of his ear a little bit. You could, couldn't show his face. You could show the back of his head, but not his face. And that's, you know, what's happening in the news always dictates some of these shows and that. So they just, you know, if it gets, you know, like when probably when 9-11 came up, they couldn't do any blowing up buildings for a while and stuff like that. So, mm -hmm. And they're, they're quite gauged on that, how touchy. But I mean, it's, uh, and that, but AMC is also a little more, it's not like as much cable. You can show a bit, but see, Hell and Wheels also changed too, because we were, the first season, I think we were in a different time slot. So if you're in, if you're showing in certain points and you're at 7 o'clock, you can't get as gory, because I remember... And then it went to a later time slot, and then it got gorier. You could just tell by the writing it was more violent because it was starting later in the in these times. I don't know how it works because it goes from east to west coast and all that stuff. But there was a change in the middle of it they could show and stuff like that. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, early on in your career, you did Blade Two. What did you do yeah. for that? I didn't actually do any makeup stuff. I worked with, uh, we had a shop at the time called Gizmo Shop, and we did... Uh, we did the badges, uh, blades badges. Um, uh, what else did we do? Oh, we did the backpack thing for his knife. We did those goggles that when he was fighting the guys, and, some, and we made the goggles that shrink up and down. Um, then we also went on to do all the armor, and then they go and hunt the vampires. And the, we did 26 suits of armor that they had to wear and go into the to the caves. And that's what we mostly worked with the costume designer in Calgary and stuff like that. So. Cool. Yeah. What would be um, an effect you were most proud of? I don't know. I don't know which ones I like the best. Well, I, I sure like that one with Billy Bob's leg. I that mean, one, that yeah, was, yeah, yeah. That was quite that impressive. That was pretty good, yeah. It was quite a bit, bit done on that. There was, it was quite a few stages on that, because there was, there was a bunch of us worked on it, and we had different stages of a... Like, he had a slip-on sock at one point when he was walking, and then we had to actually build a fake leg. He was on a chair, and he, his leg goes off, and we had a fake one on the other side. and that sort of, But we had to make a mechanism that would make the bone pop up. And that was a bit tricky, because... Uh, we designed it a certain way to pull straight out, but they just the director wanted it tied around his toe, 
And I said, well, no, it should be around his ankle because you wouldn't get, you couldn't pull. You got no pull on the toe. But I, sometimes in TV, it's if it looks visually better, they'll do it that way. But it doesn't make any sense. Like if I was going to pull my leg, my bone straight, I'd put it around my ankle and pull straight out instead of, because your toe just wouldn't do that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, because of television, you can do that. And it just visually, I think, works better when you do that. And stuff like that. You think it's because of t it's a small screen? No, I, I don't know. I, I think just the way it looks. Most of the time, the direct, it just it's just a bit vis visually the way it looks. Like, I mean, sometimes you all do over things like, you know, it's like we always change stuff all the time because it's real. Sometimes it doesn't look very real. You have to sort of like when we do gore stuff and we sculpt stuff. We always overdo it because most humans, when you see it, it's kind of just a bunch of mush. But we try to make it interesting, put little veins and all that kind of, because it just looks more visual. But in real life, it just if you've seen it in real life, it looks just like hamburger meat or something. It's not that interesting. It's no, like, actually, you know, when you watch somebody get their hand cut off, it's yeah, like, you know, and watched a, a yak is that thing where the yeah. guy chops off his finger. Oh yeah, and you're expecting blood. Yeah, 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 yeah. You it know. takes quite a while for the blood to Yeah, so, yeah. You know, it's like okay. Yeah, is that right. the face of the death? Isn't it? I think it was. Yeah, I've seen that one. Like yeah, that. Yeah. 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 Hope yeah. nobody's having dinner watching this. That's right. <laughs> no, I, I think the people who watch this don't get bothered by this kind of thing. <laughs> they don't eat dinner. <laughs> Do you ever? Did you ever see an effect that you watched later and went, "Oops, that didn't work so well"? Or? Probably most of them. I <laughs> no, I, if, I mean it's funny because when you do effects on that, you're also you're mostly at the mercy of either the editor or the DOP. If you get a really good DOP and they, they light it really, up, it really makes it look great. It only makes it look better. But if you can go the other way, you can build a really good thing, and then it, they shoot it, light it badly, it just goes the other way, and it just looks really fake. So it's, it's there's a lot of elements involved in, in, in the, and then the editing, of course. If you hang too long in something, sometimes it, you can look too much, and you can see things move around and j jiggle and all that stuff. And, that aren't supposed to be jiggling and stuff like that. So, <laughs> what about an effect that you've seen in a film that you go, "I wish I'd done that," uh, and you didn't? <laughs> there's probably a lot of them. Like, uh -huh. like something that you go, "American no. Werewolf," probably the thing. Oh, I'm I'm kind of more back in those old eighty stuff. I do see new stuff that's really good too. I mean, most of it's old age makeup and all that stuff. And like, I really like Benjamin Button, and I like the. Uh, my favorite action, my favorite makeup of all time was when, when we did the. Uh, it was the one with Gary Oldman, uh, Red Dragon or something. One of, one of the uh, Science of Lambs movies when he's burnt up. Mm -hmm. The great canon to that makeup. I think it's fantastic makeup. Mm -hmm. I, I just think, you know. I thought uh, I thought for a minute you were going to say Dustin Hoffman, a little big man. Oh, yeah, a little big yeah. man. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. good, yeah. yeah. Which was shot that, I don't know if they shot that stuff out here. A lot of it was shot out in, Ca uh, in Cochrane. Yeah. So, yeah. Dick Smith was out here, I think. I think when he, when he shot. So they might have done some of the stuff out here. I'm not sure. That was 70, wasn't it? Or something? Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, I, I mean, Dick Smith's The Hunger is amazing and stuff, all the Hunger mm -hmm. and Bowie yeah. and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's a lot of, you know, the guys nowadays are getting really, really, really good and stuff like that, but it's, you know, it's uh, it's just tech, people are getting better and better and stuff because we're getting better. <laughs> well, when we get back, we'll start to talk a little bit about CGI. We'll yeah. be back right after this. Hello there. I wanted to let you know, listener, that I couldn't help but notice last night when I was peering through your window that you weren't wearing the latest of Scream Radio merchandise. May I highly suggest you go to shop.spreadshirt.com backslash Scream Radio to get some authentic Scream Radio merchandise as soon as you can. Because, as they say, it soaks up the blood quite well. One of our viewers sent us an email wondering if they could have a better look at our set. So we have our bookshelf, uh, an Alice Cooper photo autographed that belongs to uh, the gentleman who owns his home, Wade Clark, as well as the Kiss Lawn Gnome. We have uh, Terry has provided a DVD gift set that has little busts of the Wolfman. Dracula and Frankenstein, and there's just an assortment of horror novels here. 
Um, that's really uh, about it. Uh, it's a very simple set. Sometimes I just feel like nothing I do matters. Like I'm not special. We only got one retweet today from your mom. <sighs> Sad. We were just wondering if maybe you could give our blog a shout out. A shout out from me would be a little off brand. I have 15,000 followers. You know what that means? A community like this? <laughs> more to the left. His heart's more to the left. <gasps> You're just hitting bone, dude. I'm trying. Mr. High is trending. I really hope nothing bad happened to him. It's like, poof. He vanished, right? Anybody could be next. Even you. You can find more information on our Tragedy Girls Twitter page. Your brains, my charisma. You can do anything. From the tragedy oh, girls. Angie, you can't even this right now. Are you afraid that the killer will target you because of your infamous blog? We will not take any more shit from this serial killer. I'm so scared right now. <laughs> you look amazing. Jeez. Michaela? Shit. Do you want it okay? I'm sorry. Stay in character. Phone's off, but it's a matter of life and death. This is crazy! <laughs> <laughs> we used to be the same, you and me. Do you remember our first time? I just want to know, what's next for the Tragedy Girls? Flow day. I don't know if that's not how that works, right? And welcome back. Hey, Terry, what are you looking at there? I'm looking at this wonderful poster that was provided me. I was very, very, very shocked at this. Boris Karloff, The Early Years in Canada, a coming production from Double Leap Films. And HGB Entertainment Limited. Yes. Um, it perhaps will be available, but we'll keep that uh, uh, under our hats right now. Uh, but this is uh, the pre-production, or the actual poster, for the early years of Boris Karloff in Canada that uh, will be shot in the very, very near future. And it is something to keep in mind for all you classic horror people out there. And this is a piece of Canadiana, a piece of film history that deserves to be recognized. I think it's going to be a very, very, very good show. I, I, I believe it will be too. And you'll have an opportunity to own one of these posters autographed by Sarah Karloff, Boris Karloff's daughter, who's going to come to Canada. And we're going to take her around and show her some of the places where her father uh, began his acting career back in the 30s. The 20s, actually. 20s, 30s. 20, yep, yes. In Calgary, Lethbridge, Brandon, all over uh, British Columbia? Basically, yes. Um, uh, Calgary, of course. We had a big state, Fort McLeod. Mm -hmm. uh, all of these places. Uh, and uh, interesting uh, little tidbit about uh, him writing a play. Mm -hmm. He wrote, honest, Boris Karloff wrote a play, at what was called a two-hander, which is, in acting parlance, is basically just a two-person play uh, about a man and a woman's relationship, and he wrote it in Hardesty. And it has never been produced, and just another little bit of some of the, uh, the facts that will be coming out in Boris Karloff, The Early Years in Canada. And for your information, Hardesty is a small town. It's not like a language. <laughs> it's not Hardesty to say. <laughs> and this poster goes off, goes to the ninth caller, is it? Yes, yeah, yeah, to the ninth caller. <laughs> yeah. To the 600 and 999th caller. Yeah, yeah. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> or the 666th caller. How about that? 2037. Hello? Well, you SMM people out there wearing collars, you can call right away. <laughs> Alrighty. Well, All right. okay. So before the break, we were talking to uh, our guest, Dave Trainer, 
about some of his experiences with uh, filmmaking and television making. Um, you had a few questions regarding. Yeah, I was going to. Um, I was. I was asking. We were talking a little bit about Rick Baker. Yeah. And everything. And uh, you said that you uh, you attended a class with him. Yeah, it was like, at IMAX. Yeah. IMAX. We went to the International Makeup. I met just in Pasadena, California. He did a big uh, conference in one of the halls, and he was answering questions. And uh, he has a book coming out. That's what he was talking about. But I don't know if it's. I don't think it's even out yet. Mm -hmm. like that. So, but he's, he's he's actually one of my faves. Him and Rob Wakeen. So, uh, did you ask him a question? Did no, I was going to go like towards the front. He was. Act, yeah. I was surprised it was only half full. Like I thought. But you know, he's kind of. It's getting to the point where these guys are getting a little old, and they're. I know they're just not. I don't know if they're hip enough. As, as Coming old. soon to a convention near <laughs> right, you. Right, that's right. That's right. Yeah. So. yeah, and we were. We also were sort of talking a little bit about process, and we said yeah. that a lot of these guys um, and women, there's probably some yeah, women yeah. that do it too, and everything. Yeah. Uh, don't ask. Don't persist participate they have a lot of assistance at everything to, yeah, do, yeah. to do stuff and everything because it's yeah. just if it's a large project or yeah, yeah. You, you yeah we're like yeah. that I'm like that too I mean, yeah. I actually get hired for a lot of the makeup girls and people in town and that and they're great to work I like working with everybody and stuff like that and, but that one person I work with is Gail Kennedy and she's Emmy many times Gail's won Emmy well, she's been nominated many times she's won once and I've been working with her for years uh, Sharon Tui Joanne Jacobson just plugging some names in town mm -hmm. and uh Brian Callahan and stuff, and, but uh, it's just it's funny because I'm actually I don't go to set much. I used to go to set a lot more, but I kind of work in the shop. I work with a, a great person called Yvonne Cox, and she, people might know her out there from Face Off. She was in ninth season Face Off. But there's a bunch of us, and uh, when I started, I was by myself, and I just then I started realizing it's I can't work 18 hour days stuff like that. So, mm -hmm. so you have to start bringing people in, but but you start specialize, you know. One thing about a Calgary is different than a lot of other markets. We kind of do everything from right from the bottom all the way almost to you know put them on set. And a lot of times in LA, it's not like that anymore. It's kind of more specialized because um, uh, it, it's just well, we're just lucky we can do that here. It's I, I don't know. I talk to people in LA, and it's funny because they say, "Oh, all I do is hair," and they said, "What do you do?" And I said, "I do it all." And they go, "Really?" And they're always kind of shocked. But we don't really have a choice here because we're such a small. Small market, you have to learn to do everything. Like even the prop building, I do a fair bit of prop. I don't build as many props as these. But, uh, but I forget the question. Well, yeah, no. <laughs> I, walk, I walked into your shop one day yeah. and there was some there was rocks sitting there. Yeah, rocks. Yeah. yeah. And he says, well, "Which which ones are real?" And I'm looking at it. And I'm, I don't know this one. And it just it was what styrofoam. Yeah, it was a hard hard foam urethane foam. Hard foam urethane foam rock. Yeah. It looked yeah. identical to a real rock. Yeah. And that was for like safety for bashing somebody's yeah, somebody head. Yeah, somebody hit somebody's head. I don't know. I can't remember. That was a tin star or something like that. Yeah. Hmm. But you you build a lot of that stuff. Like when your props. Like I said, I, don't, I used to just we used to do whatever it took to do what what you had. But I, I've been so lucky because I've sort of been doing just prosthetics in the last couple of years. But I love building props too. But there's a lot of good prop builders around too. So, uh, but you start to become specialized because the market here is getting bigger now, and it's also changed too. Because I mean, when I used to do shows like way back like Lonesome Dove, there's no violence in TV, so there wasn't much prosthetics in those days. It might be a broken arm or something. But nowadays, because of cable, you can do a prosthetics has really been taken forward and then with old age makeup and all that stuff. And the work just wasn't out there on these shows and that, until cable television came along and Netflix and all that, because you can show a lot more. And that was funny when you used to do, you know, work on ABC shows and stuff, you know, you couldn't show much. And so, the, so we ended up building a lot of just uh, props most of the time and stuff like that, you know, big guns. Like, I mean, out here was, used to be quite wet, you know, Calgary's not as much as known for westerns, but we used to do a lot of westerns out here and stuff like that. So you end up building rifles, rubber rifles and all that kind of stuff. Whereas, I guess, well, yeah. So, but now we're starting to get more horror stuff. I mean, horror is pretty big still, just in cable and stuff like that, because you can start showing a lot of stuff. And that's, that's, mm -hmm. but, uh, yeah. that's cool. Yeah. I was going to say, maybe you should, like, for one of these episodes, make Terry and I look old. But then I... I <laughs> uh, could you make us look young without rotoring us? Get that Vaseline going on the lens. <laughs> All you see is this kind of a white, hazy <laughs> image. Right. Here comes Dong along with the car, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> 
So I have to ask you a question here. Is it hard to make a realistic looking prop penis? I've actually had to make a penis once. Huh? Yeah, that's what I'm asking. Is yeah. it is it no, hard? Well, I couldn't look too real. Is it hard? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Where's the laugh track? <laughs> um, but we had to build one for it. We did an episode on uh, Helen Wheels or something when the guy would, they had the, uh, the natives cut off the guy's penis and they put it, I think he, had, he was supposed to be in his mouth or something. But it's funny, I just made a whole bunch. Of, we had to make bags of these penises, like if there was like 10. Literally a bag of dicks. Yeah, yeah, it was, but it was funny. I just, I, like, I, I just took sheep skin. Like it couldn't be that close, so we could sort of we had to get the right color and everything. Oh, it's stuff. like a sack of hammers. Yeah. So, <laughs> but the funniest thing about it, we made ten of them. They went out to set, and they all disappeared for some reason. So they never came back. So it's always been laughed at. at that. Did you check there, the there commissary? Were souvenirs, <laughs> so, uh, the commissary and the hot dogs right, that yeah. everybody yeah. had. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I did. I did build a penis once for a show called. Excuse me, uh, Scar 3D. It was a 3D horror film that was shot here. And uh, the director was kind of winging it in one scene. And he said, I want this this guy. They peel back and we did all these scars on him. And he was cut up and everything. And they said, can we have his dick cut off? And they said, uh, and he's just telling me this. Like, I said, when you're shooting him, he goes, but an hour. <laughs> <laughs> and okay. I said, okay. And I look at him. So we actually went over to the food table and we got a croissant. And we just coated it with blood and... Did a little, little bit of work on it and stuff like that, but it was a croissant penis. I'm never looking at croissants <laughs> again. <laughs> so, and on screen, way, did it? I'm a big fan. It's of it's pretty darkly, but you can't tell and stuff like that. Like it's he's cut off and it's it's sitting somewhere on the blanket and that you don't really see it too well because it's pretty darkly lit and stuff. Oh, like okay, that, so. so it's not but like oh look, the guy has a croissant for a penis. But it was a 3D though. So. <laughs> a 3D <laughs> penis. That was croissant. a 3D movie. And that's what I said. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just thinking of a bloody <laughs> There goes our our food channel. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Guy Fieri, it's not too late. Yes. We're still available. Yeah. Yes. Help us. <laughs> you know, um, well, you know, I guess well when you have to literally wing it yeah. on a set. Yeah, do sometimes you have to do that. Like yeah. that. You, yeah, you gotta yeah. get uh, you gotta get creative and I guess yeah. sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Yeah. And, most of uh, the time it doesn't work and that sort of but wait, well most of the time when you build stuff you just throw more blood at it. If it doesn't look mm -hmm. right somewhere you just dump a lot of blood on it and that's what they want. Mm -hmm. When you when you talked about prop uh, yeah. building. Yeah. Uh, do you have like a particular like period in history you like to like to do? Like, oh boy, I like to yeah. do medieval or I like yeah. to do futuristic. It's funny because I never really thought about that. I yeah. like futuristic stuff, but it's funny. I watched a movie. I, I James didn't like it. I, I asked him about a Crimson Peak. I, mm -hmm. I think you said you didn't like it. No, it was. It, it it didn't. It wasn't as good as I thought yeah. it was going to be. I, I, thought I, that, I, quite, I thought it was. A, I thought it was. Yeah, nice. yeah. It was I, fine, but I just didn't. Yeah, I, I think it would be the area. Go get that area because because I, I like that film and I like that era because I like that kind of hammer film stuff. Mm -hmm. I think I'd like to work in a period film. It doesn't really happen out here very much. I mean, you get if it is, it's a western. Well, I don't even know what period that is. If it looks a western's eighteen sixties. I, I don't know what period would those films be. We could be eighteen sixties England or something. Mm -hmm. Which uh, Crimson Peak the, I, and ham or the hammer ones. What years are those on? Well, <coughs> well, I mean, a lot of them would take place contemporary, but contemporary yeah. back in the day. Was 1880. Like, like Vampire. Like, like, no, the early Vampire. Yeah. 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 Like yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah cause I, I'd like to work in those kind of period films. It'd be kind of fun. Mm -hmm. um, Westerns are fun. I really like Westerns. Yeah, because you can, you know, yeah. give the the scars. Yeah. And, well, it's funny because Western, I don't think there's really been great Western horrors. I was thinking there. Is there any green? You guys come recall was any? It, uh, what about Martians? That one that Daniel Craig was in? Cowboys and Aliens. <laughs> yeah, I, didn't, I didn't see it. Oh, oh, I, that's I, right. I didn't. No, that's not, that wouldn't be the answer. No. Okay. <laughs> bone Tomahawk. Well, Bone Tomahawk's pretty. Yeah, we like Bone Tomahawk. Yeah, like Bone Tomahawk. Yeah. I remember phoning you that day. Yeah. And I'll phone Dave once in a while yeah. when I see something that's particularly yeah. well done and say, yeah. the bar's been raised. You know, when that guy's hanging and they just... Yeah, I split them in half. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. like, wow, okay. That, yeah. Well, I did work was... on a horror western. That, uh, what's that called? Uh, oh, that Danny Trejo film I worked on. What's it called? Oh, Dead Again in Tombstone. Yeah, yeah. 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 You know, speaking of, of gore, I watched uh, a picture from the 80s. You yeah. don't remember it. I think I, I was I, I told you about it. It was uh, Natasha Kinski's Cat People. Oh, yeah, Cat People's pretty good, yeah. You know, yeah. And I thought, this was 
a mainstream yeah. picture. Yeah. Paul Schrader directs it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, not a horror guy. Yeah, yeah. And Taxi yet there's, driver there's and all that stuff in it. a fair yeah. amount of gore at the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In on it. The arm getting pulled off by the lion and stuff. Yeah, yeah. The, 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 the panther, and that yeah. was yeah. Uh, Ed, 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 Panther, yeah. It was Ed Begley Jr. Yeah, yeah. That, long before yeah. St. Elsewhere. Yeah. All mm-hmm. these things. Um, you know, some of the some of the other stuff that was yeah. that was in that picture, and I thought, yeah. wow, that, this is mainstream and this is yeah. happening. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, the soundtrack too it was a bully or something. The soundtrack. Yeah. Yeah. Note fire with uh, gasoline. Yeah. Giorgio Moroder. Uh, Moroder, yeah, yeah. Moroder, and he did the song yeah. in there. Yeah. 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 And uh, I thought that was pretty cool. Do you think yeah. mainstream is going? Do you, in your opinion, is mainstream gone for that sort of? Of, uh, of, of, of thing other or, than alien what you mean gore or yeah, just, yeah. Gore, or that kind of a thing yeah, I, I don't know it seems like when they have gore in films they kind of people seem to it seems he's lessened or something like I was surprised when I seen Shape of Water I thought I, I thought whoops sorry uh, it's, it's kind of, I, I thought it quite gory actually and I thought it was going to be I thought it was a PG film or something mm-hmm. and I just watched it and I, I really liked it I really liked Shape of mm-hmm. Water but then of course it's all still Guillermo del Toro who's still going to be Kind of gory in that, but I thought it was pretty gory for a film that was a top picture. Like there's mm-hmm. elements in there, isn't there? He gets his fingers chopped well, off. Let, let's say Get Out had one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. it's got its moments too. Yeah, so. I've never seen Get Out, but I heard it's good. Though. Oh, we mentioned that weird. on their second, our second show, yes. and everything. I yeah. said this is going to be good, and it, yeah. it came up with the uh, Academy yeah. Award nominations. Because yeah. actually, um, when you think about it, Shape of Water, is probably one of the first. Is there how many other Oscars have been won by fantasy kind of? Ray Harryhausen, I think. No, but for best picture. Best picture. First yeah. one. Oh, um, yeah. first one. Genre ones don't win. Yeah, yeah never. Uh, until win. now. Yeah, yeah. So, so you know, I was really hoping that you know one of them would Shape of Water or Get Out. Get Out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You came close. Uh, the Exorcist. Yeah, the Exorcist close. was good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ex- I really close. liked it. It's one of my. T- um, well, it won for sound editing yeah. and that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that was really good. Did Ellen Burstyn win anything? I think she, yeah, she won. She won she best supporting actress. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. 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 But actual best film? No. No. Well, what? Jacqueline Hyde, Frederick Marsh came close. Oh, well, maybe yeah, maybe. that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Into these, but he he yeah. got was the only actor to get a a best yeah. acting award. Word, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. For for Jacqueline Hyde. Yeah. And. Uh, that was interesting too when you were talking about uh, uh, prosthetics and everything. Yeah. When he does, I'm sure you, you're yeah. way familiar with his yeah. transition in that in that yeah. film that they did just with colored lenses. Yeah, like you know, and rotating the, colored the lenses. Something. And, yeah, and uh, yeah, uh, his expression. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. In that, yeah. And then well, he became this primal Neanderthal man. Man, that, so, exactly. Yeah. yeah. I always like the the Jekyll and Hyde one with Jack Palance one. Yeah, yeah the, the television one. one. That was yeah. brilliant. Man. It's really mm-hmm. funny yeah. to watch now on some videotape. Well, it's just kind of <laughs> it's like a soap <laughs> opera or something like that. So, mm-hmm. But it was really good because he did. Did he do two at that time? There was another horror one that was done. Mm-hmm. Right? Dracula. Dracula was the other yeah. one. Yeah, yeah, Dracula. Yeah, like he was a brilliant Dracula. German yeah, was... shepherds running as wolves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dan Curtis. Yeah, that's a on CBC. Dan Curtis. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Dan, Dan Curtis. Did See, that. I think that's what also inspired me too. Was all those Dan Curtis films that came out like Crowhaven Farm and uh, Oh yeah. And what was the other ones? A lot of them had Dan McGavin. Dark well, Shadows. Dark Shadows and mm-hmm. uh, and I also thought Cold Track. Cold Track. Yeah, I thought it was one of the best. Like I was, I remember when X Files came out, and I said, "You guys, if you've seen X Files, you got to see Culture." Yeah, yeah. And the next I thought they were way better because they also had that sense of humor in them, and mm-hmm. stuff like that. But they yeah. had brilliant creatures, and they had good ideas, and, and it was had more peril. And the X Files were kind of like, "Let me just go in there and solve it." Where he was always in peril. He's dropping his camera or something. He's trying to get. Yeah. It, he was almost like a Columbo kind of. He yeah. was, yeah, and he was kind of bumbling and stuff. Yeah. And I liked that aspect. I didn't like the cool kind of. X Files, and you had Simon Oakland as his editor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Simon Oakland. Yeah, yeah, that's well, right. What are you doing, Carl? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you know what's funny yeah. about that is, is you know, a guy like Darren McGavin in today's television could not be a leading man. No, no. He's not handsome enough. No, no. I mean, even yeah. somebody like Savalas wouldn't yeah. be a leading man. Yeah. Do you know who could though? I was just just popped into my head yeah. about this. Yeah. Uh, John Cassavetes. He would, depending on the show, like, yeah, 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 he could have. He was so wired, so you know, yeah. got that eye. But he did. He was a leading man on TV show, wasn't he? Just some. Cassavetes, I there think. There was one show called like The Dark City or something. There was a gang. There was a detective I'm show sure in the fifties, and that he yeah. was a he was a leading man in that. He was yeah. the main guy in there. Yeah. Because I mean, well, seventies had a lot. Because like William Conrad's not really a leading man. And well, Cannon. <laughs> have you ever? Have you ever? I I thought about that. Have you ever seen? 
uh, William Conrad's film, his film career. He played yeah. a lot of bad cops in the noir films. Oh, okay, yeah. A lot. And he would always have a sidekick. And he'd yeah. be one of the guys that picked the person up, bum, 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 yeah. bum, like this, and do the interrogation, because he had that great yeah, voice. Looked, yeah, that's right, you yeah. Know? And uh, he was he was younger, and he wasn't yeah. as portly then. And know? he wasn't wheelchair-bound at that point. Yeah. No, no, <laughs> no. no. He did, uh, did, uh, and he did a lot of that, and he was always at the fedora, you know, with yeah. the mustache coming up and going, yeah, yeah, you yeah. what? He you filmed know? film noir stuff. He did. Yeah, 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 yeah. He was yeah. countless yeah. Of ones of those. Yeah. Always, uh, you know, really good, really yeah. good actor. Mm -hmm. And then he went on to do uh, Gunsmoke on the radio. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> well, seeing as how we, this is a horror program, yes. one of Cassavetti's, I, I thought was a really good role, mm -hmm. was the villain he played in uh, The Fury. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, which is uh, hardly anybody knows about oh, that uh, film. Yeah. That's that, they fire, don't they? I mean, well, they they, yeah. they have telekinetic powers and they Drew can, Barrymore, Drew Barrymore. Yeah. Was that? No, 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 it was um, the Amy, was Amy Irving. Yeah. And uh, oh, is it the one the roller coaster goes off or something? And she does mind power and the roller coaster flies off oh, the tracks. I'm trying to remember, I think that's a same, girl yeah. gets pushed through a windshield. Yeah, but. They kill somebody and they're in the air spinning and blood is just oh, yeah. flying. Yeah. Like, yeah. Okay. Um, oh. That sounds like Final Destination. Yeah. Well, in a way. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Cassavetti's wasn't he Rosemary's Baby, though? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That was, that yeah. was the big one. And in all his, you know, uh, you know, killing of a Chinese bookie and all of these yeah, things. Yeah. All his yeah. really opening night. Yeah, yeah. Dirty Dozen. Mm -hmm. That's true, yeah. And yeah. a real rebel filmmaker, too. Yeah. And all his biker stuff, too, he used to do. Like, mm -hmm. he did, like, or... 60s yeah. ones, kind of, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wild ones, or I don't know which one, Wild Angels, or that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but Pray I thought, for the Wildcats. Yeah, that's right, yeah. That was a real... I like that. Right? If you're talking about, you know, the horror pictures, you know, like Rosemary's Baby. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. You know? He still had that wired, frantic, you know, yeah. <laughs> you want to come on? Yeah, yeah. yeah. frenetic <laughs> sort of, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> so... Yeah, no, I, I yeah, I mean, he, he could probably be, but I don't, I don't think there's anybody right now that have to be, people yeah. today for series have to be too pretty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like you look at a series like Lucifer. Yeah, yeah. You know, like Darren McGavin is Lucifer. Yeah, yeah. No, it's not yeah, it's really right, yeah. going to happen, you know. Yeah, yeah. No. Conrad is Lucifer. That's right. <laughs> you know, there's, there's a memory that comes from Cannon, where Frank Cannon sits down at a truck stop. Yeah. And he goes, are your burgers good here? She goes, they're very good. He goes, I'll have four. <laughs> for some reason, that's the biggest memory I have of Frank Cannon. Yeah, no, yeah. yeah, and I won't bore you with my memories of BJ and the bear. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> we never take Boy. shit seriously. Um, <clears throat> or the banana splits. <laughs> yeah, the banana splits. That's right. <laughs> Can you name them all? No. Flegal is one. Snorky, Flegal. Okay, audience, email it. Snorky and Flegel. Yep. Open the pho phone lines. <laughs> Open the phone lines. <laughs> First Sigmund? one in. <laughs> Sigmund and the Sea Monster. <laughs> Sigmund, yeah. What was the one that was prior to H.R. Puff and stuff about hats? Was that it? That's it was Charles Croft Nelson one. Riley. Croft one or something. Yeah. And it was Charles Nelson Riley, and it was this weird world. With I, keep, I just thought of Harrigan. <laughs> Harrigan. Do you remember Harrigan? I don't know if you guys got that out here. No, CTV. I don't it was uh, I forget his name. He was a Canadian actor, and he uh, uh, played this leprechaun called Harrigan, and they <laughs> made him small and everything. He was running around the set. Yeah. So, I don't remember that one. It was about the same time as you know, hilarious House of Frightstein. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Trouble with Tracy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Trouble yeah. with Tracy. You wrote from Trouble with Tracy. Yeah. Yeah. Who was that space one that was done out here? Cure the Star Lost. The yeah, Star Lost. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. That was pretty high. Wasn't that James Cameron's first show? <laughs> no, no, actually, it was written by... He might have been. That was based on an idea by Harlan Allison. And oh, yeah, Harlan yeah. Allison was so disgusted by it, Yeah. he actually removed his name, which was his right to do. Yeah. So if you ever watch The Star Lost, you'll see that it was created by Cord Wainer Bird, which is his pseudonym. <laughs> oh, is it? Okay. Yeah. Okay. You know, real fuck you to the yeah. producers. Well, I mean, f come on, this is CTV. Yeah. yeah. You know, I remember Walter Koenig going on there as a guest star. Was but, he? Oh, oh, yeah. It was just. <laughs> we're, we're also dealing at that time too on on TV too. You, know, you had Battlestar Galactica, the original one. Yeah, yeah. Galactica eighty. Yeah, you know, yeah. All of these. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, 
these type of things that are going on. And, uh, hey, we tried. Yeah, well, a lot of Americans won't even know what the hell we're talking about. No, they wouldn't. No. No. Well, that's something to look up. I'm sure it's yeah, right, available yeah. on on the net. Yeah. Uh, but House of Frankenstein was pretty funny, though. Oh, I loved it. Yeah. yeah. It's it's Billy Van. Billy yeah, Van. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because he really only had about three or four actors in the whole show, didn't he? Well, it was Igor, Billy yeah. Van. He played the librarian as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, did he also play the Wolfman? Yeah, no, he's a different actor. The, the no. guy who played Igor. No, was it Igor who played? Because the guy who played Igor played the Wolfman, didn't he? I'm afraid it's Don Herring in that too, or something. Don Herring might have been. Oh, Don Herring was. Not but no, I think Igor would have been a little too stout to stout. be the. Yeah, the, the oh yeah, where, yeah, it's true. Yeah, no, you, I think it was Billy Bannon that makeup. Or the that wolf. The, the giant friendly. Oh, yeah. The friendly giant. Yeah. Okay, now now Americans are lost. Okay. Yeah, they're lost right now. Might yeah. as well mention Shea Helen. Yeah. Hey, Shea Helen. Yeah, and uh, Shea Helen. Oh my Shea Helen was a program that taught Canadian youth French. Yes. That were knack. Yeah. What about that? Now we've that lost the French audience. pedophile show. Uncle Bobby. Oh, Uncle oh, Bobby. Right. <laughs> oh, and Bimbo the birthday clown that yeah, was yeah, on that's there. Right, Bimbo, yeah. Bimbo. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Uncle Bobby was a, this Canadian program that had this old guy who looked kind of like um, Mr. Grimswald on... The big sideburns, didn't he? Like, really big sideburns. Yeah. No, yeah, yeah. no, and that gray hair Bobby that was face. all combed back. Oh, maybe combed yeah. back, yeah. And he always wore that kind of old man sweater. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And he looked like the uncle that is waiting for you in the tool shed. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah, and he was our, our kids' program, along with Dale Harney, the magician. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, it's Uncle Bobby. We're having a lot of fun in the studio today. We hope you are having a lot of fun at home. We'd like you to be happy. We've got a birthday picker, and here she is. I'm going to show you the words on the hat. There they are, birthday picker. And it's Darlene, and Darlene is Bunny's babysitter, aren't you? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so Take very good care of them. Oh, of course you do. Thank goodness you do, because Bunny is along today to read the Bunny books. There's the brolly hanging on the hook. Do you know what he shot when I knock the door? Open up, Bimbo, please. Come on out, Bimbo, please. Ah, we get the words right. Yeah. Oh, come on out, Bimbo. And you can all shout with Darlene. Oh, come on out, Bimbo, please. Come on then, baby. Oh. You can do it. Here's an introduction just for Bimbo. Introducing. Bimbo, the birthday clown, and the son of Happy. Bimbo, Bimbo, I'm the birthday clown, Bimbo, 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 even if you didn't have a birthday. Big Daddy comes down from the sky. Oh, crying, oh there he is. The oh, big yeah. boy. And uh, Mrs. Happy, Henry. Oh, 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 she's uh, looking oh. as lovely as usual. As usual. And we've got Wilson, Keppel and Betty, the triplets. And Betty is the one in the middle. Are you ready to kick, darling? Yes. Okay, a one, a two, a three. Happy birthday Sing, to you. Me? Yeah. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, oh, happy birthday, birthday. Happy. Happy birthday to you. Happy. Happy birthday to you. And kisses to Mrs. On the ear, as usual. Happy he birthday, <laughs> dear Bobby. Once more. Happy don't forget to kiss mommy today. To and don't forget to kick. Happy birthday Ooh. to you. You want to blow very hard. Sure. Away you go! Oh, and and here. Goodbye! <laughs> We've got Darlene passing over, and she's going to close her eyes and shout, Fanfare, please! Fanfare, please! Okay, there's the fanfare. Close your eyes, okay. Darlene. And out comes a letter. The letter is a long, oblong, white one, okay? And it's beautifully done to tell us that Janet Huff, Janet Huff, of Pickering, Ontario. He's five years old. Abracadabra, abracadabra. Here's Bimbo with the... <laughs>
Captain Kangaroo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, but he wasn't he wasn't vaguely pedophile. Yeah. Well, yeah, and I know, and it would, Don't tell me just, he was getting oh, it on with no, Mr. No, no, Green no, Jeans. No, 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 I'm just, I'm just, I'm just saying these are all the things that people grew up, you know, with Mr. Yeah. Green Jeans. And yeah. now, what do you have today? Teletubbies. The yeah, dancing, yeah, yeah. the dancing. Well, that's very old, though, Jason. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> And the first black guy, one of the first black yeah. guys on, to yeah. introduce him, Mr. Baxter, you come in and talk to yeah. kids. Boy, we're off. Talking. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's right. Here. Oh, Hello, off. children. Oh, that's a different one. Real yeah. back. <laughs> Boy, okay. we got off topic on that. Well, we, uh, we do have a, a, a question here, yeah. and let's uh, get to that. Um, <laughs> Hello, my ghoulish fellows. <laughs> okay. Question one. What's your thoughts of horror... Pouring. What's <laughs> what's your thoughts on four? What does it say? Season. It's written in. <laughs> as I, I'm tongue twisted. As I, hello, my ghoulish fellows. Salutations from your fiendishly neighborhood boogeyman. I didn't write this. This is what's honestly coming up. Question one. What, what's your thoughts of horror foreign films becoming Americanized? Oh. Does it lose the original majestic of the macabre? Should we deal with that one That's first? Yes, yeah, let's deal with yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. He wins the poster. Yeah. <laughs> and you would, yeah. but we won't tell you what the poster is. <laughs> That's right. That and that's from Martin. Thank yes. you, Martin. Yes. All right. Well, um, I, I don't know. I've never seen a foreign film get remade in America that I thought was worth a shit. There. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Next question, please. Well, there's the right one, the right one, and the right one. Well, yeah, yeah, the, that that would be kind of an exception. Yeah, that was kind of the reverse, though. That really wasn't it, because the first one I think was Swedish, yeah, yeah. Finnish, yeah. and then and then they've got Hammer remade. remade it. Yeah, yeah, and then you know, so it's not really North Americanized. It's, yeah, it's done in the UK. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, I I just think most remakes aren't very good yeah yeah you know i mean i I've, I've never seen one that i really liked a really good foreign film get remade except martyrs Ma uh, and well, martyrs should never have been remade no who was a martyrs that's canadian yeah yeah the french canadian culture the french, yeah. yeah yeah and it, it didn't need a remake yeah. in fact the remake the remake was just inferior in every way yeah. well here's a, a question for me for a person in the industry yeah. why do you think they remake them are running out of ideas, and, mm -hmm. well, and well, sometimes they don't. I don't know. Just somebody just come up and say, ideas. "We can redo this story." And well, they already got it. They, if yeah. they're going to do a feature or something, they already got it built-in audience. Yeah. So they want to put bum in the seat, so they just remake it. And they know people will listen to the sequel. Yeah. Like Psycho is horrible. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't. I think it's just to see that. I mean. Films get recycled all the time. Like it's, they're all getting remade all the time. Mm -hmm. like that, so. Yeah, yeah. Hollywood's filled with that. And you yeah, make yeah. it three or four times. Uh, you know, yeah. in, in the silent era, you make a sound version of it. Yeah, and, yeah. And then into the fifties, you make it's a color version of it. You know? Yeah, exactly. So, but, but I, I don't think that the American Godzilla films yeah. hold a candle to the no. Japanese. No, no. Uh, it, it, oh, you mean Mecha Godzilla? Uh, all of these? <laughs> yes. Uh, well, Godzilla, Godzilla films are what they are. And yeah, yeah, yeah. and everything, mm -hmm. and all of these don't... Yeah. Well, how many North American... Well, I, I'm going to discount the first one with... Yeah. with uh, Lauren Green? Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, uh, Perry Mason. Raymond Burr. Raymond Burr. Yeah, Raymond yeah, Burr. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm going to discount that because, you know, I'm standing here and I'm watching him wreck the building, and it's horrible. Oh, yeah, it's horrible. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Well, what, about, what about all the Asian films that are remade? Like, what, what's the other one that's called? Like, Ring and all that. Was it, but they're all the same director, isn't it? Well, because a lot of times, yeah, the, the, the director will come in yeah. and, and redirect his own film. Which, well, yeah, what's yeah. the point? Yeah. You know, bigger budget? Yeah, yeah. And a lot of times, the, you miss the nuance. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I. I'm one of those people. I don't care if it's you know. I, I I like I don't mind subtitles. I prefer if it's dubbed. Yeah. Um, but you know, it's it's there's something about just watching it in its original language. Like there's one yeah. called Wither that I keep mentioning because I love it, and it's Swedish. And uh, I love it if they if they remade it. 
Well, it really, it's just a ripoff of the Living Dead. Yeah. It's a remake. It, it's really a ripoff of the Evil Dead. It really yeah. is what it is. But it's so well done. But I mean, if they tried to do it here, I guess probably Sam Raimi'd be all over them. Yeah. You know. Um, I don't know. You know, I like they're they're remaking a lot of Argento films. Yeah, they're starting. Like to, Suspiria yeah. right now yeah. is going to be remade. Now, you know, it's just, that's going to be. Is he going to do it, or is he, they going to do the states? I haven't heard. I don't think it's. I don't think it's. Because I thought it was going to have bigger stars in it or something. Like that. And one of the and yeah, well, does that make the movie? No, but that's yeah. But then it gets people to go see it. Puts bums on it. Yeah, it bums yeah, but we've had this argument before. Is there anybody that can open a movie these days? Just because Matthew McConaughey is in something doesn't mean yeah. it's going to open well. Yeah, yeah. Meryl Streep doesn't mean no. it's going to open well. No, no, no. There's no, no that's, guarantee now. That's uh, that's because I think audiences have changed. Yeah. You mm-hmm. know, they don't I mean, go to see. You don't go to see a, you know, a, a John Wayne picture. You see mm-hmm. an example. You went to see a John Wayne picture yeah. that superseded the title. Yeah. 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 Or an Elvis movie. You know, or an Elvis yeah. movie or something. Well, Stan who Lee do you, probably. Who do you see now? Mm-hmm. Stan Lee yeah. makes. I mean, all his, if it's got Stan Lee connected to a Marvel. Yeah. Well, if it's, if it's, if, if, if it's a superhero. Yeah. A superhero now, that's what's all yeah. happening now. Yeah, that's, that's I mean, basically. I mean, that's the whole thing. Yeah. You know, you, we've talked about this before. I mean, you know, you go out and make a nice little piece of life film. Yeah. That actually, you know, teaches you something about life. Yeah. You know, uh, whether whether it be a low a low key uh, rom com or whatever. Yeah. Where's the box office coming from? Yeah. You know, really. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, uh, unless it's uh, another Bridges of Madison County or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's not going to bring, it's not going to put the bums in the seats. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. you have to go to art houses. That's and right. And art houses are becoming That's, yeah. scant. Houses. Yeah. yeah, I mean, they built, yeah, basically houses. Well, yeah. the whole well, it's, it's not a horror picture, but it has supernatural overtones. Field of Dreams. Yeah, I guess fantasy. Yeah, so fantasy. Yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, was that raised a pilot though? Yeah. And when did a full mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Take the, the baseball. Made Kevin Costner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It allowed him to do the postman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, um. <laughs> now he's been replaced by the email man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm trying to think of, of foreign films that have actually been remade that are any good no, they don't no. even remake their own films good no no you know th- there's a few and, I, and I, I will say there's a scant few and I thought of one the other day that I thought we'd have to mention because it was actually good yeah. and I, it just eludes me at the moment yeah, yeah. but as far as foreign films go I prefer you know if somebody went and, and, and started remaking uh, like Fulci's Zombie yeah yeah which I'm surprised that nobody has it does yeah yeah you know it's 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 um it wouldn't be the same. Yeah, yeah. Because the effects back then, yeah. for what they were, were interesting. Yeah, I mean, that's if, right, yeah. If, you know, I mean, if you if, if you wanted to remake Beyond or something like that, yeah, yeah. it wouldn't be the same. It just no, yeah. wouldn't be the same. No, no. Yeah. So, um, yeah, there's no, there's no, it's unnecessary. Yeah, yeah. And I, I just don't think that, you know, there's been, ever been anything that's really been done justice. The, the odd film that will match mm-hmm. yeah. its, its foreign counterpart. Yeah. But I don't think there's any that, you know, I mean, what, what, I really don't see the point. Yeah. The Brotherhood of the Wolf? We talked about that. Yes, but it's a French film. Yeah. If the Americans try to remake it right now, no, no. It wouldn't be the same. Yeah, yeah. They'd Americanize it, yeah, and yeah. that's not a slight against America. Yeah. But there'd, there'd have to be okay. Well, okay. How do we make this play well to the Chinese and the millennials? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you'd have that problem. Yeah. So the script would be massively rewritten. Yeah, yeah. You know, instead of instead of making it uh, in France during that time period, could we maybe make it in the future? Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. You know. It's, so, you know, it's it's um. You know, there's certain things that just shouldn't be remade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it would be like if the if if Poland wanted to remake Enter the Dragon. What? Well, what's the point? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, it's yeah. really. I mean, it's it's, it's pointless. Yeah. I know there's one there's one remake again. It's a non horror picture. Was uh, somebody remade Ben Hur? Oh yeah, that's, mm. it was and Charles Nelson's son, wasn't it? Uh, I never. I I have it on my PVR because huh. it was. Uh, on a, a, a network, 
Yeah. And uh, I haven't watched it, but it's got um, the last name of the actor was Hawkins. Oh, okay. And Jack Hawkins was in the original. Oh, picture. okay. Oh, yeah. uh, uh, he he was he made uh, Ben Hur Charlton Heston's character yeah. his son when they went to Rome. Oh, yeah? Saved him on the ship, oh, uh, on the slave ship. And I'm wondering if that's a relation to yeah. Jack Hawkins. You know, Jack Hawkins. Yeah. Yeah. Kid, well, he would be well a kid be. now. He would be a kid now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Be a man, mm -hmm. now. And uh, you know, I haven't, I haven't watched it. I, I, apparently, it was released in the theater. Uh, it has uh, Morgan Freeman in it. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, and uh, it was released in the theater and disappeared. Much like the remake of The Magnificent Seven. Yeah. Boy, that didn't. Well, there's. You can't remake that film. No, no. Well, I mean, well. Let's put it this way, yeah. you know. I mean, Seven Samurai. Yeah. It was based on that, so. Yeah, yeah. You know, so I mean, they did manage to do that right, but that's yeah, not yeah. a horror film. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, I do think that remakes sometimes are a good thing. What about remakes like of Don't Don't Be Afraid of the Dark? Del Toro did a uh, '70s film. You know, I don't mind if it's a film that if, if it brings that story to the attention of a yeah. younger audience. Yeah, yeah. Um, like, let's say we got ambitious and wanted to remake Play Misty for me. Yeah, yeah. Because what millennial has ever seen yeah, well, Play Misty? Seen, yeah, for that's right, yeah. And it's a scary little tale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, of course, we gored up. Yeah, yeah. 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 Maybe, you know, penises were yes. made of baguettes and, you know. <laughs> but, uh, um, you know, sometimes it, if, if it brings an audience in, yeah. good. Yeah. But don't don't remake Friday the Thirteenth. Don't no. you know? Don't reimagine yeah, it. Don't remake call remake it a prequel. Friday, well, yeah. the prequel, <laughs> and you know, oh, it's a prequel here, it's a prequel yeah, yeah, there, yeah. and you know, it's well, Texas Chainsaw. I was surprised how many times they did Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Now I don't even know how many times it is now. Six, yeah. I think. Well, it was even Night of the Living Dead. Yeah. Well, well yeah, but that's been done. Yeah. Done. yeah. And it's been re it's actually been redone four or five times. Yeah, and. Because it's public domain. Yeah. I had, re I had, I was going through, and I'm still doing it right now. There's a lovely book by an uh, by an author called Kim Newman, called Nightmare Movies, and, yeah. and I recommend it yeah. for people in the audience. Yeah. And I, it's twenty bucks for an ebook or something yeah. like that. It's really good. It starts horror from the '60s onward, yeah. and uh, he sets this up. There's a lovely chapter on George Romero, and he yeah. said that Romero actually sanctioned the colorization. Of Night of the Living Dead, oh, yeah? simply because of the fact that he wanted the people to make money off it. Off first, he yeah, said yeah. he made no money off the original. Yeah, yeah, none. Yeah, yeah. yeah. there was nothing, and it kept. He was so apparently surprised. There's probably yeah. viewers that this is their film and everything, yeah. and they know more about it than I do. Yeah. But uh, according to uh, Mr. Newman on this, uh, he said that they made no money on it. And he was so surprised when he got invited to uh, art festivals and presented at uh, 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 con film festivals and these kind of yeah. things. Yeah. And, and it gradually built. And, and, and that's what he sanctioned that. And he also gave him money to do his other things. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, why would you remake something like that? Um, well, because you know yeah. why? Because they can make money on it. Yeah, yeah. Because it's yeah. public domain. You don't yeah. have to pay anybody the rights. Yeah. And it's... The it's, remake of the, the Living Dead was pretty good with Tony Todd. That, that, was, that was the only, yes, it was yeah. a very, and that's one that actually stands, those are the two that I consider to be Night of the Living Dead. Yeah. yeah. Not Night of the Living Dead 3D, not even uh, uh, the producer's cut. Yeah. Not, uh, I mean, there's, I've seen seven Jeez. remakes of Night of the Living Dead, yeah. and each one gets successively worse. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, well, right, right from, you know, uh, on the top scale, you've got yeah. Savini's, you know, with yeah. Patricia Tallman. Yeah. At the bottom, you've got, like, some of the worst indie stuff. And it's yeah, just yeah. kind of, you know. Yeah, yeah. But is that a remake of of the actual film, Night of the Living Dead, or is it a remake, or not a remake, a redoing of the genre? Like, the genre, this is the zombie genre, yeah. and we're going to put this same style of character into this same situation, but we're going to have different, uh, different outcomes. You know, well, it was pretty close. Like right? a, no, they're, they're, no, it's it's pretty, usually on every one of them, Ben dies at the end. Yeah, it's and, pretty page for page. Yeah, you know, yeah, so yeah, yeah it's yeah. pretty page for page because yeah, if, if you deviate too far from it, then you're going to alienate yeah. fans. They're going to yeah, shit yeah. on you. Because you know? yeah, so, yeah. uh, I kept thinking of you know, the return of the living dead. 
No, no, no. That's Those entirely like different. Yeah. Yeah. That was yeah. a parody. And that yeah. was well, yeah. well, it was it was well, well done. done too. Yeah, very good no. film. Yeah, yeah. The Barking Dog. The Barking Hat mm-hmm. Dog. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. No, it's a very good film. And yeah. but but when it comes down to Romero's, like it, what are they remaking right now? They're remaking Dawn of the Dead. Yeah, yeah again, yeah. No, a Day of the Dead. I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Day of the Dead. Yeah. yeah. And of course, the focus has changed. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. You know, well, how can we modernize it? Well, yeah, yeah. How, do you, how do you modernize it? When when was it shot? It was eighties, right? Yeah. 80s, yeah. Well, modern? yeah, but I mean, it takes place in that military um, bunker, bunker yeah, yeah. and okay. that kind of thing, you know. And and of course, the the tendency today would be, well, you know, let's you know, the lead has to be female, yeah, or yeah. this has to be yeah, this. Yeah. You know, you have to. That d- try to get into that demographic. But yeah, yeah, you're just trying to change the demographic. You know, so, so yeah, you know, yeah. th- they're really quite unnecessary. I, I, I just, you know, the remake something from the past. Like, I, I want to remake um, whatever happened to Baby Jane. Yeah, That's yeah. my thing. Yeah, yeah. And I, I wouldn't even mind remaking yeah. Yeah. Um, Play Misty for him. Yeah, yeah. Those are probably pretty heavily covered, though. I mean, pretty copyrighted. Now you'd still have to deal with Clint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He owns yeah. Most of that, yeah. Clint would would get his son to play the yeah, right. lead. No, yeah. His son would come down here and, and, and play the lead. What he about would. the Beguiled or something? They already like that. remade the Beguiled. Though. Yeah, yeah. Out. I don't know if it's any good, but sometimes the they retitle them too. Yeah, you know? oh, they to no. change title too. Yeah, so I was surprised. They, yeah, they because they did the read. You know, I never seen the remake of Beguiled because no. I really liked the first one. It was really good. Mm-hmm. This one, yeah. But then you know, how about a Civil War veteran? now <laughs> um, yeah yeah that's yeah. right yeah people watching what's a civil war yeah so, <laughs> what's going on now oh, <laughs> what's going on? there's no avengers in here there's no yeah. avengers, that's right no. <laughs> um i know they tried if you're looking at remakes too they tried on television you know with remaking night stalker did they yeah yeah i believe they did yeah yeah they, they had uh there was an irish guy in it or something Jeez. and so it got as far as uh, it was some some story that the the backstory was that he was trying to find his wife had been adu- abducted. Well, it's, that's and a Liam Neeson film, isn't it? Yeah. Every mm-hmm. Liam Neeson oh, film. Is this was like a five. <laughs> uh, it was on for like uh, six shows or eight shows or something Jeez. like that. But it was the Night Stalker. Was he was the paranormal guy, mm-hmm. and it was on TV. Yeah, 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 it was a Fox thing, I think it was. Yeah. Uh, oh, I remember that. I never heard anything about it. Yeah, so. it disappeared. Yeah, much like the new Twenty Four. Yeah, yeah. And no one saw it. Uh, <laughs> what, what was the uh, Sleepy Hollow? That one on television it might not well, be available. Well, yeah, that's right, the TV one. Yeah, that's whoever's right, yeah. watching this might not be available in your area. You know, yeah, but, yeah. Uh, uh, that uh, that disappeared. Yeah. Um, so many of them. Yeah. Yeah, well, I'm surprised some of them last as long as they do. Really, yeah. you know, I, can, I don't know. I don't know a single person who watches Lucifer. Not a one. Not a What's that show called? Lucifer. Well, it's based on a comic, though. Yeah. So it does have a, a, a certain following on it. There's, hmm. there's, uh, there's that. You follow the Arrowverse? No, I don't follow. You I just watch follow. Supergirl? Yes, I do. I, I, well, uh, you must watch the crossovers. I'm a DC. I, I don't. Uh, I'll have to say that there's, honestly, there's too many of them on. And uh, honestly, if I didn't have to work <laughs> you know <laughs> and do other things you know uh i i would be able to see all these i i used to watch flash i used to watch gotham i uh, never did uh you know the other some of the other dc stuff because i have to what is it the defenders it. or what is it the defenders yeah or whatever that show is yeah, apparently of superheroes or something yeah. not not that's the justice yeah. league but uh um, but apparently this this year uh, i, I I think I read it on Facebook, so it must be true. Um, John Constantine is going to be a, a regular on the show. Yeah. So the character of Constantine, yeah. I guess that kind of rules out. Well, it doesn't it necessarily doesn't mean that it's not going to be any more movies. But yeah. well, there was Preacher too, the series. It's still going. I don't. I I don't follow that. Yeah, well, a lot of the graphic novels are, are quite interesting. Um, yeah, like it's all that, that's remakes because they take in a sense it is because you take a. a, a uh, a, a comic, yeah. No, oh, it's an adaptation. And an yeah, and then they take that and then they bring yeah. it out and yeah. they try to do it. Um, one of the most effective movies to do that was Dick Tracy. With, oh, yeah, yeah. Had the comic book colors, the original, yeah, yeah. And yeah. 
Well, and uh, who Dustin Hoffman as Mumbles? Yeah, yeah he's well, brilliant. brilliant you know, man. They no. didn't. They didn't do my favorite villain. So, so. Yeah. No, yeah. I was well, just, no or scrotum or face. So. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, be back. <laughs> um, we yeah we were sort of off a little bit on on, on the horror pictures yeah, yeah. there on the, on the remakes yeah. and uh, okay well CBS right now they're going to redo the stand Stephen King's the yeah. stand in ten parts yeah. necessary ten parts yeah. well it's it's a lo- it's a, I mean it's it's my favorite King novel yeah. I mean it, it's vast. There's a lot of character development that, yeah. you know, and, and I enjoyed the first one. Yeah. I really enjoyed that miniseries, The Stand. Yeah. How many parts was that miniseries? Oh, I think it was... It's like two or something? I think it was... No, I think it was three? Yeah. Uh, two hours? Huh. It's a six-hour event, I think. Yeah. But I thought the, the guy who played Randall Flagg was perfect. You know, yeah. I mean, these days you'd modernize it instead of you know, no Molly Ringwald. You know, you yeah. you know, you'd, you'd modernize it that way. But <clears throat> you know, Maybe Rob Lowe could still play the same character. He hasn't <laughs> aged. Yeah. yeah. Maybe you stretch it out because you know you can make more money sell to the advertisers. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. see, yeah. if you look at the unexpurgated version of the stand, I mean, that thing is this fucking hardcover. Yeah. I mean, this whole bits with the trash can man that were never filmed. It's a it's a very it, it's large in scope. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I would think that I would do it as if I had my if I had my way I would do it as three, ten episode seasons. So you do it over thirty hours. Right. If, I, if, if, if it was up to me. Hmm. Well, speaking from uh, maybe a, a writing point of view, sometimes there's reasons why those things are not filmed. And, yeah. And uh, uh, I'm, I'm sure you've seen it too. Yeah, uh, you know, from your end of things, the yeah. well, uh, if you're given six hours, there's a reason. Yeah, yeah. There's a reason that somebody has dribbled off, you know, yeah. in, mm-hmm. into this tangent. That why am I going to spend four point five mil to show yeah. this sequence that yeah. isn't going to be around and makes yeah. no sense mm-hmm. to me? Like the shiny, the that's why we have editing. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know, and to make stories tight. And everything. Yeah. Uh, well, sometimes they don't do because they can't. The technology's not there. I remember when they did The Shining, the first one, they had all the hedge creatures coming to life. And then the TV show, I think they had the hedge creatures in it, didn't they? They had CG stuff. I think so. Yeah. Yeah, but it, I didn't miss it in the movie. I didn't say, "Oh, and the hedge creatures." No, no. And I, I preferred the made-for-TV. Yeah. In a way. Yeah, in a way. Yeah. I didn't. I, I didn't like the Danny Torrance better. That little kid just sat there with his no, mouth no. wide open. Yeah. The whole film. Yeah. So then we never talked really about uh, it. Yeah. You know the pronoun Remake, in the basement. Yeah. 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 Uh, the telefilm, the one that was was it last year? Yeah. Or something. Well, uh, I mean, the first one was a you know Canadian produced, shot here in England, yeah. uh, movie, and and you know Tim Curry did a, a very good job as Pennywise. Yeah. Um, if you look at the contrast between the two. You know, um, I was a little concerned about the Pennywise in, in the new one, but I was actually quite impressed. Mm-hmm. You know, they they did the children's part as 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 much as it had to be done. Yeah. You know, so it's a little different take, yeah. but you know, it's fine. And again, it, it's it reintroducing St- King to a, di- a newer audience today. Right. Is that a remake then that works? I I liked it. I liked yeah. it. Yeah, and, and you know, is it superior? Who knows? Yeah. That's that's you know. I mean, when we talk about this shit, most of it's subjective anyway. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, there's there's going to be somebody out there who goes and then watches Easter Bunny Bloodbath and thinks it's the greatest fucking thing they've ever <laughs> seen. Yeah. You know, it's, well, it's, yeah, that, that's why film criticism is, is subjective. Yeah, we so. don't put we don't put filmmakers down or people that get stuff shown. You know, yeah, just, yeah, we yeah, just throw yeah. out an opinion, yeah, and yeah. Uh, you know, it's 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 the way we feel, and you can uh, take it or you know. Or just take it as a grain of salt or a grain of whatever it is you take and uh, yeah. uh, well, see, how, see how it fits. The It film, because it was made for the cinema, mm-hmm. is gory. Yeah. What um, about sequels? I, I think it, it... What about sequels? Well, I mean, it's part two is coming. So, the part two? Yeah. It? Yeah, they do the adult years now. It? Yeah, It part it? two. It's. It? Yeah. The pronoun returns. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it too. 
Brute. <laughs> okay. No, well, we're going to take a short break at this yes, point. And question too. We'll be right back. Okay, and we're back. So I had the good fortune of having Dave uh, work on Herschel Gordon Lewis's Blood Mania, did all the, the practical effects. Um, what do you remember? What was, what was the thing that you remember most about the shoot? About the people or? The well, the pretty thing. It was, it was it was pretty enthusiastic. It was, it was one of the first shows I worked on people are really, really into the project because of Herschel. I mean, he was kind of the driving force behind most people wanting to be on the show. Mm -hmm. yeah. so it was, uh, that's what I remember most of them. I remember lunches and stuff. We were sitting yeah. sitting in a, I think it was an Irish community hall one day and everybody's eating their lunch and Herschel's holding court and telling yeah. Hollywood stories and yeah. stuff. And yeah, um, special effects wise. Yeah. There's usually two things people <coughs> make mention of. Yeah. The fall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, you've brought along the head that we'll yes, look at here head, in yeah. a minute. Yeah. And uh, the scissors. Well, that's right, the scissors, yeah. 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 So, well, I mean, I guess we can probably share a little bit about, uh, yeah. about that. Um, what I remember about the fall and it's in, in segment two where our protagonist falls from a, a building and hits the ground. Um, we were only, what, eight, nine stories up? Yeah, only, though. Only, yeah, yeah well, yeah, <laughs> you were a little bit... Uh, Lying close to the edge. And that's no, uh, I thought it was you and I who threw it off. No, you, it was Chris. Chris Peterson. Chris, Chris Peterson, yeah. Yeah, There's so... No ropes or tethers or any <laughs> windy day. Well, I mean, um, the first AD wanted me wanted me to he's be tethered. Up. Yeah, he's tethered up. Yeah. And I said, "Whoa, no, I'm not going to be fucking tethered." Yeah, yeah. I said, "You're worried that I might fall off the building, yeah. somehow survive, yeah. and if I do, I'm going to sue myself." Yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah, so yeah. I'm not wearing a fucking tether. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. So I arrive on set, and I've got a cow's liver. And I'm on the ground, Dave and it was you and Ashley. Ashley was up there, yeah, Ashley. Yeah, and you had the, the dummy. The dummy up there, yeah. And uh, I was had an exacto knife and I was cutting apart the liver. Yeah, yeah. And giving the kids around, you know, yep. the some of the crew. Yeah. Um, showing them, you know, this is yeah. a ventricle. This is yeah. this is the main Good, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, so I, I I've drop that into a, a baggie and take it upstairs, take the elevator and then up the yeah. stairs. Yeah. And when I open up the door to go out there, there's Dave and he's got a staple gun and he's stapling a wig <laughs> to <laughs> the dummy's head. 
or all I could think of was that doesn't look so much like Sonia Deleo as it does Robert Plant. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was his cameo in the film, was that Robert Plant? <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> starring Robert Plant as right, yeah. stand in for Miss Deleo. Well, we were pretty lucky in that scene because we didn't know how it was going to end up. Like, we had one take and that was it. Remember? And it just happened, mm-hmm. it was, couldn't have been better the way it hit. Mm-hmm. Well, that, was, that was pretty lucky. <laughs> there was that corner. And I told the director, I said, Mel, it's going to hit yeah. there. Yeah. No, I think we should go a little bit over to this yeah. way. Yeah, yeah. And we had a three camera setup. <coughs> and uh, so, yeah, we, well, you, yeah. I brought up the guts and you yeah. and you put them in yeah, there yeah, and there you got go. everything, yeah. got her all dressed up and everything. And then Chris Peterson and I dropped it. Yeah, yeah. And it actually landed quite perfectly. Landed right in the head. Too. Yeah. That's what you wanted. To, you want to yeah, and it landed in frame, which yeah, is nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean that was that was yeah. fun. And that was a good one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, I mean, to me, I mean, yeah. you know, it's kind of like a dream come yeah. true. You know, doing a gore effect in a Herschel yeah. Gordon Lewis movie. Um, the scissors. Yeah. Um, tell us what you had to do for that. We just cast cast uh, Catherine's the actress's stomach, and then we just made a. I think we did. Don't we do silicone? And then James, you played the killer. Put that, did you use? You were the guy. Who did yeah, the I was the guy who did the slicing. Yeah, because right. only half of the torso, just half, and then we put. And then you pushed all the intestines through, or something. Like that. Yeah, we had the. Yeah. The way that worked was. <laughs> I was. I didn't even know why I was doing this, yeah. <laughs> but uh, I would walk around and I would look through the camera, see yeah. where it was, yeah. and then I thought about it and went, okay, it's got to go here and here, so I've yeah. got a, you've got this torso, yeah. so I thought, okay, it's, you know, I had a felt pen and I went here, yeah. here, yeah. and I said, okay, so I had to place the, and those yeah. scissors were just long, big, yeah, that was yeah, a real yeah. pair of scissors, so the whole <laughs> idea was to poke it through yeah. and snip yeah so I did that yeah. and then I had a bucket of guts yeah so I was pushing it through yeah and one take we couldn't use yeah. was there was a piece of intestine that came out of the opening it looked like a hard dick I thought that was just you no that was me yeah <laughs> <laughs> The one shot I wanted to get and I didn't (laughs) was um, I've got the gloves on, Gordo's gloves, and I'm pushing it through. And I was going to turn my hand and go and wave. Yeah, yeah. So she's looking down and she's dying and being waved at. Never got that, unfortunately. Um, What did you use for guts? We used uh, sausage casings full of gelatin. And then you had real guts there. Well, no, there was some real guts, wasn't there, or not? Yeah, there was. There was. There was yeah, there was some more. Like there was real organs. Yeah. yeah. Well, that one long intestine there was that. That was a uh, sheep's guts filled with gelatin, I think, and that sort of. It actually looks pretty good on film. I'm surprised how well it looked on film. That's we're we're giving that's away that. your secrets. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> 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 Another good effect you never talked about was that uh, Roger Roger gets his legs run over, and then that tr- that van crashes into that dummy of Roger. <laughs> That was pretty. It was pretty sickening, actually. Everybody was kind of. It's like when you do effect, and then every, there's a gasp at the end. Like it's almost a vacuum <coughs> gasp, and that because it looked pretty gross when that head flew, oh, and yeah. smashed in. And then Chris was driving it again, driving that, that vehicle, and he was he didn't he almost hit another vehicle or something there side of the street. Camera A, what? camera B. Yeah. Where Roger is sitting. As you're driving. There's no straight through road. Yeah. So you literally have to veer to the left and down a road. Yeah, yeah. Now, <clears throat> my thoughts on this were I wanted it to be like in The Devil's Rejects, where yeah. the girl escapes and she's running oh, yeah, in the semi You just cut, quick cut, yeah, yeah. You know. And I thought, okay, this is what we want to see. Yeah. <clears throat> so I walked over to Chris, who's getting ready. He's got yeah. his walkie talkie, and I said, I want you to hit that thing with speed. Yeah, yeah. I really want you to hit it. It was a playground zone. Yeah, <laughs> guerrilla filmmaking. <laughs> um, 
so when he when he did it, he was he was moving. Yeah, yo, he was pretty fast. Yeah, and he barely made it around that little corner. Yeah, he barely. Yeah. 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 I mean, of course, what's on on the corner? But my car. Yeah, so he right. would have ended up hitting my, my car. car yeah. um, do you remember how long it took us to get that dummy off the sidewalk? That was quite. It was pretty pretty ingrained in the whole ass. <laughs> it was. It was literally like stuck to the, yeah. the tarmac. Well, the head was made out of wax, so it probably melted all of the. <laughs> uh-huh. But uh, what did you have stuffed in there? I, well, I, we, we, we slushed wax inside of this head mold I had, and then I put in plaster to make bone fractures. And then I think we just stuffed it full of gelatin, like colored gelatin inside there. So basically just yeah. red. Mm-hmm. But it was pretty close to what it probably might look like because we had brain fragments and everything. And it's, mm-hmm. It popped when you hit, remember? It kind of just exploded. Oh, yeah. Well, same with the girl falling. We did the same technique with the girl off the falling off the building and stuff like that. Too. Mm-hmm. The funny thing about that is, is like I say, we had a three-camera setup. Yeah. And when you watch the raw footage, well, on each camera you can hear, as soon as the body hits, you yeah. hear the cameraman go, oh, fuck. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Or, oh, shit. Yeah, yeah. Like, freaking them out. And it was yeah. kind of freaky. Yeah, 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 <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know, because I was up on top, but they yeah, were yeah. saying it looked pretty... Yeah, it looked pretty good. I was standing, I wasn't that far away. It looked pretty good. It was, uh, mm-hmm. it was gory. But sometimes those simple effects sometimes work the best, you know, so... Mm-hmm. so. And a lot of people thought that was CGI. Was it? Oh, yeah. no CGI. No CGI in there. No, CGI in that one. Yeah. no, not at all. Yeah. Um, we decided that we wanted to do an homage to Scanners, the scene where the head explodes. And in Scanners, it was done with a shotgun. Yeah. So naturally, we thought, well, let's yeah. shotgun ahead. Yeah. Um, can you take us through the process there? Yeah, I was... I was I wasn't really connected with that. Well, a good friend of mine and our excellent makeup artist, Stacy Wagner, had a head cast of uh, G. Was it G Hunter? G Hunter. Yeah, yeah, his head cast, and so we used that. And Stacy, I think he made out of wax too. He did all wax, wax things, and he was the one who he happened to have that head cast. So we cast him after we we found we had the head cast, and we cast G Hunter in the film, yeah. so that he can get his head blown apart and stuff. And so we took that out to a farm, and we shot it with that shotgun. I remember that because. But we shot up, we had the shotgun behind its head, just like the exact same way they did the scanners, Dick Smith did the mm-hmm. scanners. And the, the problem is that when you shot up like that, we didn't know where those, I don't know where those pellets would end up because they were up in the sky. <laughs> so, yeah, well, we yeah. aimed, we aimed quite high. high pretty high, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So. It, was a bit, it was a bit tricky to do. We got one of the, uh, who was AD? Her, her, was there a grandfather? Yeah. Yeah, he, he, he had shot, because we shot it on a farm. Well, he wanted to do that. He wanted to, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But we, we shot it on the farm mm-hmm. and... Stuff. Yeah, it was, pretty, it was pretty good. It was a pretty good green screen it though. Green, you had a green screen, remember? Yes, I remember because I, I, um, I, for the outdoors there, I rented one. And I didn't realize how much that blood would splatter. Splatter, yeah. So I was literally huh. cleaning the green screen. Green, yeah, yeah. Um, I remember coming on set and you and Stacy were like little boys. Yeah, yeah. And Stacy said to me something along the lines of, "Oh, this is real old school yeah. Savini shit." That's right. Yeah. You know. Well, you gave the head to him, I think, didn't you? Or did I give it to him? We kept parts of it. and We gave it to him. Oh, I, I'm not sure. No, I think we did. I grabbed it what I could, and I gave it back, and he was pretty excited about that. Yeah, I, I, excited. I kept a lot of wardrobe, but actually yeah. the dummies and stuff, I have no idea. Like the Sonia DeLeo well, dummy. Yeah, what happened was, well, some of, well, that one went off, fell off the building. We threw it in the dumpster. Because it was so wrecked up. It was just PVC piping and everything. And Did stuff. you do cool shit? Did you like wrap it in a blanket and roll it up and then right. duct tape it and make sure the blood was there and throw it into the up. dumpster? That's right, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> I think you did that. Lesson for people. Yeah. If you're going to shoot against a green screen with a shotgun, wrap the shotgun barrel in green tape. Yeah, yeah. It'll save you a lot of headaches. <laughs> ah, we'll fix it in post. Yeah, yeah. Well, I was worried we were going to see his head behind there. Because mm-hmm. I remember I said, that head's going to disappear, but there's a bunch of stuff behind it. So, <laughs> and I thought you'd see top of this baseball cap or something. But we didn't see that, but you didn't see the gun, the barrel of the gun, I guess. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Well, only only until the, <coughs> you see him put it up. Yeah. And you, and you see it go, oh, but it's the, still there as the yeah, yeah. exponents. Of course, you have to mask it up. Mask up, so. yeah, 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 yeah. But that was that was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that was because I put I put my iPhone down. It was on. Yeah. A, it was kind of on a flatbed trailer. Yeah. So I put my iPhone down, pressed record, and and got it in frame. Yeah. 
and got it. Is so that the one we used? Because we had a couple of no, cameras. No, right? no, 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 no. Yeah. Um, and Daniel, yeah. the DP, had it yeah. all figured out. Oh, yes, well, I, I know how to, yeah. you know, the angle that it should be yeah. precisely. And when yeah. we would go to set it up, he goes, I forgot it at home. Oh, yes, yes, Can yes. you show me some footage? Oh, yeah, and luckily, I had it on my phone. Oh, no, yeah, like, yeah. Oh, okay, well, this should be good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hope so, dude. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. It's mm -hmm. a one-off. One off, you know? Yeah. Lots of that stuff. Well, a lot. We have a total one-off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> That's why I was so meticulous about getting the scissors through right. Yeah, yeah. Because you know, I mean, once you cut it, you're... Well, I don't want to look like a sloppy killer, right? That's right, yeah, yeah. You know, you know, oops, <laughs> it came out to the left or came out to yeah, the yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 so you brought along a prop yeah um, we, we did cast the actress with her head together of course because she couldn't do this uh, but we cast her and we we poured it we did a silicone of her head and then we sculpt we poured clay into it split it in half and then we just sculpted it on the inside and then we did do another mold of that which is a really three part mold four part mold we'll do, just to get it and we poured it in silicone here and then we painted it all up and I looked at this all for anatomy books which are out there and then we punched her hair in and all that kind of stuff. So you have to punch each hair in individually. Yeah, we'll right? see the hairline here. I think some of this was, but when you get towards the hairlines and all this stuff, you have to punch the hair in one hair at a time, or else it just looks like it's moving on. It just doesn't look too good. Yeah, this looks pretty impressive with the yeah. teeth and yeah, uh, yeah. And so this is anatomically correct. Yeah, well, as close as we can get. Uh, I mean, it's not gored up and bloody. It just That's looks good. better. It's even a pituitary one. Yeah, it seems to match up. We found actually, I think it was a. Damien Hurst art pieces, I think I worked with lots of that. Because so, he, for somebody, artists would split some heads in part. It was Damien Hurst and that. So we just, we more worked from that because it seemed like the most accurate pictures and there's some x ray half cuts and cut in half and everything and stuff like that. So it's probably seen, most people haven't seen, but it was pretty, it was pretty accurate. We didn't, we didn't veer too much off the real anatomy on that one. So, yeah. so the night we shot, um, that was a tricky one because yeah. I was doing the katana yeah. and you were, I was underneath there in that, and we, yeah, and I had to puppeteer it underneath and stuff, so. so you had a couple of rods to hold the head? Yeah, like, it's, there's rods right through, metal rods, that's why it's pretty stiff now, but because they're kind of glued down to this board, we had to bolt through the board, because we had that pretty solid on there, well, it was actually silicone to the board, but she's all silicone, we had to punch eyebrow hairs and eyelashes and everything and stuff, so. That was probably the most intricate effect you had in the whole show, by far, because mm -hmm. most work went into it. So, well, what was the... You said you wanted to have kind of a, a rod bottom effect. With yeah, the, but, but the it, when it came apart, I kind of like all was in the thing when that when one character's head split apart. So we were trying to go for that where it was kind of shaking a bit, and that's what we kind of wanted to go for and stuff like that. Kind of a tribute to Rob Bikini and, and the thing. Well, that was that was interesting stuff because we'd pour it in here and then yeah. I would hold the pieces and yeah. rub them together and then. Yeah. What well, we use we use this uh, material to use for. Uh, checking birthing cows and that it's kind of a slime kind of stuff and it's it's a powder you mix with water and it sticks together and makes stringy really stringy so this was really we had really tons of strings hanging in here and stuff but you'd have to cut each cut you'd have to redress it and everything we had lots of blood in there we didn't put any blood lines in there because it didn't it was just plus it was in your it was in a place we didn't want blood squirting in your in all over your your room <laughs> so, so so we didn't put any blood lines but we had enough blood inside there we just caked it inside and then we opened it up and it all these strings came loose. It was it was the same thing they used when they did the creature and the thing when his head splits in half. Same materials inside there. So. Uh, we have another question. <clears throat> Go to the head of the class. <laughs> okay. The question is: Would you guys do a few episodes on the road, from dark, creepy taverns to haunted locations? No. <laughs> <laughs> And that's from Jeff. <laughs> yeah, we'll be right along. <laughs> well, sit, no, uh, I know we're in this show, seriously. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, it would be interesting uh, to do something like that, a, a location. Um, well, we have one coming up, though. So. Yes, we do. We do. We, we definitely do. At the end of the month here, we will be doing Sinister Inclinations live from the Calgary Comic and Entertainment Expo. Yes. So, in 90 minutes... And it'll be recorded, so if you want to come, you're gonna, there's going to be warning signs that, that say this is being recorded. If you don't want to be on YouTube, Vimeo, wherever, then you, you know, don't come because it's going to be shown. Yeah. Um, Address your questions. What? Be part of the show. Yeah. Um, uh, we, last year, when we, when we appeared, 
we just made it an open forum. And the discussions were great. Everybody started to participate and get their views in, and uh, it was it was it wasn't heated or anything, but it was yeah. you know nice civilized debate. So yeah, and it went by very fast too. Oh, well, it does. Like, uh, Almost yeah, as fast as this goes by. <laughs> it does. It does. I don't mean people running out of the room either. I mean, like it was literally you were sitting there and all of a sudden, oh, it's done already, and they're giving you the rap signal. Well, okay, this is good. This mm -hmm. works. Well, I do believe our next guest on our next episode uh, is a bit of a paranormal investigator. Yeah. So yeah. I would be up to going to a place that's known to be haunted and doing it. You mean doing a show? Yeah. No, I mean, you know. Well, you just used that phrase. No, I, I'd, I'd be up for it. Okay. That sounds like a double <laughs> entendre as well. <laughs> I'll be up for it. I, I wasn't going to bring up the bag of stuff, you know, that mysteriously disappeared. <laughs> so. Well, I don't know. And, and the other thing I want to do is, I, you know, if you guys are doing a live performance, I'd like to come out and record that. And yeah, we are. You know, you'll have to sign all the waivers and everything. We, we, will, we will gladly sign the waivers, and the waivers may only be in my hands carrying the gear off after that we're at the show. Okay. But, uh, yeah, I think we've, uh, we've got something in the very, very near future. So, uh, I don't know. It's not going to, it might not. It'll happen probably during this time that they shot or the lag time so we don't know yet so but uh, 13 strikes is in your heart I, w I would be remiss if I didn't mention that uh, if you've seen Blood Mania the fourth episode Gorgeous uh, it's Mr. Trainer's band that performs uh, the songs uh, Cut Me Up and uh, Gorgeous the, the opening track to that, that piece um, anything you want to tell us about that? No. Uh, could no. you play it right now <laughs> if you... No, I don't know if I could. That's a, no, I could play it. That'd be kind of fun. You yeah. guys should do that one time. Be behind you guys with all their amps. Behind you. He has answering questions. We're playing the song really loud. James, what? what? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, it'd be nice. You know, yeah, I mean, yeah, if you guys do a set somewhere. You yeah, know, yeah. You know, just yeah. Do it up. Yeah. Maybe we can get... Uh, we should do a show, all of us with Forbidden Dimension. That'd be a good show. Yeah. Yeah, Tom would do it. Would he? That's an excellent idea. Why don't you get Tommy Bagley on here? Why don't you yeah, get him on the show here? He'd probably do it. Well, he knows horror. Oh, yeah. He, yeah. Well, he lives horror. <laughs> he actually doesn't live that far from here either. He's well, walking distance. We'll be right back. We're going to go grab him. <laughs> if Tom's home. Knock on his door. Hi, Tom. <laughs> so, uh, that's another, that's an excellent guest. Thank you. Yeah. Well, okay. So we got lots of stuff. Yeah. We've got lots of stuff coming up. Yeah. yeah. So thank you for joining us this evening. Yes. Thank you to Dave Trainer for joining us here. Yes. It's uh, yes. always a pleasure, and it, 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 I'm privy to the fact that uh, Dave has this house that is the coolest house to be in. Yeah. It's. Uh, Don't tell him the address. I won't <laughs> tell him the address, but uh, it, it's basically a sort of a '70s themed, you would say. '60s. '60s, '70s. He's a Rat Pack kind of guy. Yeah, you yeah. get to listen to the cool '60s music, and yeah. he's got a bar in his home that's like a bar. I got three bars. Well, I got one downstairs. And what yeah. outside? I got Tiki Bar too. Tiki Bar, yeah, Tiki Bar. But he's got this room in his basement that's so yeah. cool. Yeah. Um, and a little makeout room, like you would see every time I go to your place there, yeah. and, and we're down in that area. Yeah. I always want to wear a tie on my head, like yeah. Peter Sellers on the party. Yeah, that's right. You know, and I, I expect bubbles to start rising right. and, and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Num -num. Yeah. But, uh, no, there's this little area, and it's right out of the 60s. You walk up these stairs, and the whole room is a bed. Yeah. Uh, I, I think that's cool. That's right. yeah. It's not yeah. a Matt Helm. Of it's got, yeah, it's something like Matt Helm. Right? Yeah, 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 it's yeah, a Matt Helm. Yeah, yeah, except yeah. the yeah. bed's not round. Though. Do you have somebody named Lovey Craves it? <laughs> next time, <laughs> next time. <laughs> casting for love you crazy right. <laughs> send photos too right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where where that came from right? yeah, that and our man Flinton. those are great films yeah, yeah. And, and Dave's house is a whenever I see something like a an old 60s ashtray or something yeah. I go oh, okay I'll buy it and give yeah. it to Dave yeah, that's and, right 
I think I gave you those well, Playboy, those girl, yeah, Playboy, uh, Playboy girl cocktail yeah, yeah, swizzlers. Yeah. 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 As as they get colder, their little bikinis go away. It's so Way sexy. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, um, thank you, Terry. Nope. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, thank you for watching. Thank we'll you. be back soon. Thank you.